poner
we are seeing that today we are wearing netball uh, Friday t-shirts, but also look at us with our, uh, our caps of our girls, which very soon at three o'clock will be joining them in the field, uh, hoping that even today they will be winning as they've won uh, in front of us uh, uh, on the other day, which is the 21st. We pride ourselves in our ability to host major international events that not only boost development, but also put our country on a global front for sport tourism. Uh, honorable members, we, know, we, we are aware that this year, our country is hosting a range of World Cups, namely the indoor hockey, and in which uh, we need uh, to invite and to be aware what, what is going on in the, in the hockey, the T20 women's cricket, also table tennis. Uh, we, we need to, uh, when we are alone in our program, look uh, on scheduling hockey and the table tennis, and also the much anticipated Netball World Cup. We have no doubt that these events will be successful and showcase our talent to the world. Uh, today marks an important day in our sports sector as our women proteas will be competing in one of their toughest competition. And I know that uh, the, the crew that is part of this committee, uh, the way that they are cheering and cheering the girls, uh, they are multi, it does make them uh, uh, to do well. And today is a semi-finals of uh, our T20 World Cup against England. And we have seen England, uh, that it is the, it's the toughest uh, team. So we are hoping that girls, uh, when they were aware that we are all there to support themselves, they'll do us proud. We know that they are going to make us proud and bring the cup home. However, honorable members, <coughs> honorable members, um, uh, we know that they are going to make us proud and make uh, and bring the cup home. However, whatever the results, we remain proud of them for making it this far in the tournament. Uh, as the netball uh, girls so far, they are, we are feeling proud on what they are doing. So here we are today, uh, we're wishing a netball uh, South Africa girls, uh, the Protea, you know, the spa girls, that uh, today must hear uh, what is it uh, that they are doing. In those words, uh, I'm suspecting, I've seen that uh, most of uh, people whom want them to be here, they are here. Uh, maybe, let me come to the apologies, starting with the committee members. Do we have uh, uh, apologies? So, Good morning, Madam Chair. We don't have any apologies on our side. The only apology we have is from one of the board members, Mr. Smith, who's attending a special sitting this morning. Thank you, Madam Chair. From where, Mr. Smith? Uh, he is a member of the LOC, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, did Acting DG? Uh, good morning, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, all the members, the other members of the committee. Uh, I, I, I've just spoken now to uh, Minister, uh, Ms. Gololo in the minister's office, who has indicated that uh, the minister might not come because of other engagements, uh, but I'm not certain about it. I'm just saying, that's why I'm saying might not come because of other engagements. I have not received anything from the DM's office. Um, I tried to also get uh, to the office. Other than that, uh, we are all here. Uh, those who are supposed to be here 
uh, chairperson. Uh, uh, oh yes, I'm getting something now. I'm getting something as we speak now uh, from the DM's office, which says DM is unable to join due yes. to network. Due to network. Thank you. Okay. Uh, honorable members, these are apologies. Uh, can 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 I I say that can we uh, accept the apologies? Good, good morning. Good morning, uh, uh, Honorable Chair. May I also uh, yes, extend an hours to come to you? Okay. Okay, okay, ma'am. All right. Okay, no, no. Okay. Go, go on. Okay, no, no. I wanted to um, convey also an apology from uh, our director, who, who President Cecilia uh, Mulugwane. Also, she's not going to be able to, to, jo to join us from the board. Thank you. Uh, honorable members, uh, can I put in the agenda and can I ask honorable members to adopt the agenda? Sure. Uh, sure. Uh, I was trying to check about the hands. Uh, okay. I've seen honorable Mshongo, honorable Malomane, honorable Adams. Yes. I think it's not enough for us to just accept that the president of Netball is she's not here. What is the reason? And uh, I think we must get an actual reason. You know, the D DM is network. Cecilia, she's not coming forward. This is a scheduled meeting. And if it's a scheduled meeting, I think she must make it a priority for us to, to listen and to be part of the LOC and the Netball. I think one of the things why I'm raising this, there was a concern that there was a relationship issue between the board and the LOC. And it shows that if she's not here, something is fishy. It's not moody. You started with your mootis now. Honorable Malomana and Honorable Adams, uh, there's a point uh, on the table raised by Honorable Mshongo. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Greetings to everyone. You are, presentable. Also... you are presentable now. Thank you. No, it, it was just because the meeting it was not started. My jacket was. No, no, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and you show us in order that we must be seeing you that now we are in a meeting. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> not in the you, beach. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. That's uh, Friday. That's <laughs> you need to be just live and active. Okay. Thank you, Honorable Chair. I just also want to support the Umshong on the issue of the chair so that maybe we, if we can next time, because even now, maybe we don't know the apologies, what are the reason, but next time there must be the reasons why the chair is not present in our meeting because our scheduled meeting, but I also like to move for the adoption of the agenda as presented. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Adams. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, I second on the proposal of adoption. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, patience, you did hear what the members are saying. Uh, Maybe if you, you don't have a further uh, explanation, uh, you are hearing that the apology, there must be reasons uh, when the, any member uh, that are not going to come, uh, that they must uh, cite the reasons. Okay, no, th thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Um, uh, uh, reasons from the president, it's, it's due to work commitment. Um, and she said, unfortunately for this one, she was not given time off and that's why she couldn't be able to join us. Thank you, Chair. Let's take this apology, honorable members. Uh, let's, uh, now the uh, agenda has been a, a pro, uh, proposed and uh, seconded. Um, now let's go to our department, uh, to do an, an overview on the 2023 Netball World Cup. We are on that now. Please lower your hand, Honorable Adams. 
to to the office. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson of the committee and uh, honorable members of the committee. Uh, also, let me recognize the Chairperson of the Netball World Cup together with the LOC and uh, of course the uh, minister's advisor present here and all the colleagues in the department. Without any further waste of time, Chairperson, I would like to hand over to DDG Khan to then do the overview that is supposed to be done by the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable uh, DG. Uh, DDG. I'm still lucky. I'm suspecting this office is better than my house. Uh, because um, thank I'm still you. That I'm, I'm fine. I'm still fine whilst there is a lot shading. Thank you, DDG. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. I note that the colleagues want me to flight the presentation. Uh, let me quickly uh, connect it, ADG, uh, sorry, Chairperson. Um, yeah, I can't share the screen, um, Chairperson, because- uh, so need... can you assist so because you do have the presentation. Can you assist if you can? Let me try again. This is the this is the, the presentation on the screen. Oh, okay. Uh, on up as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, let's just go. Uh, okay, good morning, Chairperson. Good morning uh, to honorable members, to the ADG and colleagues present, to the Chairperson of the uh, Netball World Cup 2023 uh, board and the board members and tournament director. Uh, Chairperson, just very quickly, if I'm going to go through the slides, um, it just gives an overview of all the, um, the contribution and the responsibilities entrusted to the department. Now, Chairperson, in the, um, the cabinet memo that we put through to the um, to cabinet to get approval, there were different departments that were cited and with, with commitments that the different departments had to make. So in terms of the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture, we've had to take this event to the cabinet to get approval in terms of the bidding and hosting of major events uh, regulation. We've also had to set up the IMC, which is the Interministerial Task uh, Committee and the Technical uh, Interministerial Committee. The Interministerial Committee is chaired by the minister and the Technical IMC is chaired by the, um, the Acting Director General. Uh, we've also committed to funding to a legacy program to support Netball South Africa during the bid process, to support the LOC, and also be the, a point of coordination between the Netball World Cup 2023 LOC and provinces and other departments, also to mobilize South Africans uh, to support this Netball World Cup, and importantly, to contribute to the development of Netball. Okay, state of progress to date, um, Chairperson is. Um, we have provided support to uh, the LOC uh, in terms of media and public relations at the Netball World Cup draw in November 2022, and the same support at the Quad Series. We've also provided protocol assistance at the Quad Series that were held in January. Um, and we are um, uh, co chairing the NAT joints which is the security cluster um, for the Netball World Cup 2023. So on an ongoing basis, we are providing that support. Um, and they were very active during the Quad Series, which served as a test run for the Netball World Cup 2023. We've also assisted state security with some of their logistics during the Quad Series. And we now also looking at facilitation of secondment of personnel. This is work in progress. 
in terms of the provincial activation uh, chairperson, um, we have provided, we have a conditional grant that goes to the provinces. And within the conditional grant framework, we have indicated to the provinces that uh, as part of the capacity building exercise, the club development initiatives, uh, they must support, they must make sure that netball is given priority. They must also support the provincial netball structures. And there's also now in 2023, 2024 budget, we've actually asked for them to ring fence some of the funds to assist with the trophy tour and the fan parks and mobilization towards the Netball World Cup 2023. Um, those provinces that have a budget for infrastructure chairperson, we've asked that they look at making sure that they also consider some infrastructure or netball specific uh, infrastructure as a legacy towards the Netball World Cup. And then Netball Fridays, I think the provinces have, start, have been very active in mobilizing um, South Africans as part of the Netball Friday campaign. And also, you know, where there's key milestones like the one year to go, the 50 days to go, uh, you know, count down towards the World Cup that they must celebrate those milestones as well. Um, and then uh, Chairperson, there's a Netball Floors uh, as part of the legacy, the department has made a contribution, a financial contribution to the towards the purchase of the netball, the wooden floors. Now, Chairperson, I think we're in short supply in the country for these wooden floors. So this is also a legacy where there's wooden floors that have been bought, uh, purchased uh, for the Netball World Cup 2023. And after the World Cup, all of these provinces, all of these floors are going to be distributed um, to the nine provinces, to Netball South Africa, and as part of the legacy in the uh, in the continent, there are African countries that will also benefit from uh, these flows. Um, the provinces are also involved in the legacy courts when we hand over as part of the uh, ministerial outreach program. Uh, so they assist with the logistics to hand over this. And at the same time, uh, Madam Chair, as part of the handover of the legacy courts, we ensure that that sport as a whole is, uh, is provided with um, e uh, equipment and attire. So we choose 10 schools and 10 clubs in the area where the legacy courts are being handed over and they get equipment and attire. Because if the courts are there, they have to use it. So for them to be, uh, to, to to participate effectively, they would need the equipment, they would need a tire. And then for the province to do anything else in terms of activities that they would like to include in their plans. So some of the provinces are, or the provinces are already planning that. In terms of the mobilization, Madam Chair, all the major milestones that have been captured, it's been kept, uh, publicized on the departmental uh, and our partner platforms. Uh, Netball Friday, we've purchased shirts, we've distributed it, um, cabinet, members of parliament, our staff, DSC, uh, we've had staff activations, we've had our Netball Friday activation at Invisos. Um, when we build the legacy courts, when we're handing it over, we actually do a shirt distribution because all the legacy courts, we try and align it to Netball Fridays. So as we hand over the courts, we also use it to celebrate Netball Fridays. The outreach programs that we have, um, um, also it's used to mobilize where we have t-shirt distribution, the mascot is there. And some of our major events like the big walk, the National Recreation Day, our national youth camps, um, the Recon Reconciliation La Day launch that we had at uh, uh, the Winnie Mandela Museum where we handed over a multi-purpose uh, sports court and uh, you know outdoor gym um, we've had the mascot activation there as well and we've had the mascots you know being in attendance at many of our own events at our school sport launch of projects with the legacy handover and we've also done uh, I mean worked with Kauteng Department of Sport Arts Culture and Recreation where they've had a very active holiday uh, program um, and then the Netball World Cup was part of that activation the mascot was in attendance 
Um, so, you know, that in, they've had it in all their districts during the December holidays. So these uh, chairperson are some of the photos of the activations, Netball Friday celebrations. Uh, this was a MINMEC meeting that the minister hosted. So at the MINMEC meeting, we it was a Friday. So there was a Netball uh, World Cup 2023 activation. Uh, the, um, the Netball World Cup uh, 2023 report is a standing item on the MINMEC agenda. So as we pro present the progress report, we also celebrated it. Next slide. Okay, if we can go through the slides, these are all the slides of the activations, uh, uh, Chairperson. Okay. Um, I know Chairperson, uh, there are slides that should have um, the Chairperson's own activation that you sent us photos of. I must apologize, we didn't include it, but we, I'm, uh, I'm actually um, indicating that yes, the chairperson has also uh, been involved in Netball Friday activations in the communities in and around Cape Town, uh, from uh, you know the reports that we've got and some of the photos that we've uh, um, been furnished with as well. Okay, this is. Okay, so IMC matters, um, the interministerial committee uh, meetings, uh, they've been held every second month, but as of January, they've been held now every month. Uh, so on the 31st of January at the IMC meeting, uh, the matters that were raised for urgent attention was the mobilization of the whole of society is quite important. There was concern that was raised by the IMC about the marketing of the event and the visibility. Um, the IMC also wanted to be apprised of the kind of opening ceremony that will be, we will be delivering. What are the details? Um, will it be anything like the FIFA 2010 World Cup, the Qatar 2022, what are the plans? Uh, it must be noted, uh, Chairperson, that with the Netball World Cup, the um, opening ceremony just it takes place at the start of the first match so it's a very short ceremony about one hour so um and i think uh, the uh, chairperson will speak in her presentation around that um and then we must make sure that we mobilize the embassies to promote the world cup this will help boost ticket sales because the report was that there are some tickets in some countries that are the sales are not very good so we need to make sure that we mobilize the embassies so that we promote um, people from those countries are aware of the world cup they start buying tickets to travel to south africa um we also needed uh, the imc also indicated that there were two events the africa qualifier and the quad series so what has been the learnings from these two major tournaments that have taken place that will help the netball world cup you know, to make sure that they start refining their own processes um, and looking at all the gaps. Um, and then the program for the provinces, what are the provinces are doing? But as I've indicated, Chairperson, is um, the provinces have been, uh, I think presently their focus has been on the uh, trophy tour. So they're working on that. And also in terms of the, some of the mobilization. Um, for now, uh, Chairperson, we've got all the dates set for the whole year uh, for the interministerial committee meetings and for the technical uh, interministerial committees, the DG's committees. Okay, in terms of budget um, and what we've uh, committed to, um, Chairperson, uh, we have been um, providing support for logistics for the presentation of South Africa's bid to host the Netball World Cup 2023 at the World Netball Structures. We've also made contribution towards the announcement of the, um, uh, of the bid in Cape Town in March 2029, and also uh, logistics for the presentation of the winning bid, bid to the World Netball Congress during the Netball World Cup in Liverpool in 2019, where the minister then uh, presented South Africa's winning bid to the, the Congress. Um, and then the net, netball wouldn't close as a legacy. Uh, I've spoken about that already. 
And then the Netball World Cup multi-purpose sports courts in schools. There are slides coming that I'll speak through that uh, chairperson. And then we've also supported Netball, uh, you know, direct funding over three years to the Netball World Cup. Uh, we've given them uh, 30 million rands a year, uh, starting from 2021 and ending now in 2022-2023. And then, um, as I've indicated already, they support to the, uh, you know, to the provinces through the conditional grant uh, for the trophy tour. Uh, legacy courts, uh, Madam Chair, we've presented this before, but just uh, to say there are nine courts that we are building in the provinces. And to date, we've completed three, three of those uh, nine courts uh, and they've been handed over. The one in Lutai High School in uh, Eteguini Municipality, then in Shikutula Secondary School in Limpopo. This was handed over in Nababip High School in uh, uh, the Northern Cape was handed over as well. The other court that's ready and it will be handed over on the 3rd of March is the last one there in uh, Matlapaneng um, Primary School, which is in Ranfontein. So we are busy preparing for that handover to take place on the 3rd of March, uh, Madam Chair. All the others is there's work in progress. Um, the, the one challenge we've had with the legacy program was that uh, the sports trust, who are the implementing agencies, have had an issue with the service provider. So they are appointing a new service provider. Um, and hopefully, you know, all of this uh, work will now commence. Uh, and hopefully we should finish it by the end of um, March. Um, or they would be appointed by the end of March, so they will complete all of those facilities. Because a lot of the work has finished and these facilities do not take long. I think if all the spade work and the groundwork has been done, we are able to lay the floors. And I think that service provider is mainly for the floors. Uh, so those floors will take about three weeks and we would have uh, those courts up and running. Um, so this was the Lutai High School. This is what it looked like before and after. Uh, next slide, ma'am. Okay, this is the Limpopo one, the Shikutula. Um, and this is the Nababib. This is what it looked like. And this is what um, the final product was. And then we have some pictures as well. If you can just scroll up of, you know, when the handovers were done as well. Okay. If we can just scroll up all the photos. Okay, just to indicate that the, the budget, each court costs about 1.7 million, million. Madam Chair, you'll see that there are two courts that are being built. One is very specifically netball, and the other one is for the five, the four other codes of sport. But there's also netball markings on that court as well. So if there's netball taking place in a school, there's an opportunity for more than one team. There are two courts now, and you can have a very vibrant uh, netball activity in terms of coaching, in terms of you know, fixtures, et cetera, at the school. It's accessible to the communities as well. So, um, so yeah, and so we've got a budget of about 18 million rands, which we've allocated for the legacy courts. Um, thank you very much, Madam Chair, that we've come to the end of uh, the presentation. Thank you so much, uh, DDG. Uh, we'll engage uh, with your presentation uh, after uh, the, the briefing by LOC to you, uh, the patients. Uh, good, good morning again, um, Honourable Chair, and good morning to the Honourable um, Members. Let me also pass my greeting to the Acting mm. DG. Okay, thank you. Um, and also to the Board Members that are present. And may I also uh, uh, greet the Members from DSEC that have also joined the meeting. Uh, and also let me not leave behind our Autonomy Director together with the team that is in present, that it's, it's present in the meeting. Uh, Honorable Chair, um, th thank you very much again for 
for the opportunity for us to come in and, and provide a, a portfolio, committee, com, portfolio committee with the state of readiness. But allow me first to um, uh, again and, and we'll continue to convey our sincere gratitude to, to, to our government, to the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture, which is led by our Honorable Minister uh, Natim Tetwa and, and the team. Um, because in honesty, they are enabling us to be able to really focus on what is before us in relation to the preparation of the uh, World Cup. Uh, as, as a board, uh, uh, currently, uh, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, our eyes are, are fixed on the outcomes. And we know that the outcome is to deliver the spectacular Netball World Cup uh, in July up to August. Um, and we are continuously engaging uh, with the World Netball, who are the custodian of this event, uh, because it is critical for them also to be on the same power with us uh, in agreeing that we are on track and really we are fulfilling uh, the obligations that we've agreed to do that. Um, through the IMC, which already the uh, DDG has spoken to, that we also do attend those meetings to provide IMC with an update on, on progress around the uh, preparation of the event. And, and at the moment from our side, um, our focus is on implementation. So we are on an implementation for a, a, a mood and um, tournament director is the one who's leading this with the team. Yes, we are continuing to meet as a board every fortnight to get the state of readiness from the office and be able to intervene where it's necessary. And I think on that note, honorable chair, May you kindly allow me to hand over to our tournament director to, to do the presentation in terms of our state of readiness. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair Percy. Good Let's morning, go Chair Person and the uh, honorable members. Uh, Akuna, can you flight the presentation? Can you put it on presentation mode? Thank you. Uh, go to the next slide. The purpose of this uh, presentation is just to give the portfolio committee an update on uh, the achievements that we've currently achieved and also on progress as, as to our readiness towards uh, uh, hosting this uh, major event. We have also made a, a number of a, a, a appointments in order to capacitate our unit. We have uh, currently appointed also the, the safeguarding manager, self, safeguarding and welfare, which is Nemali Buraditadi, and the head of technical market has already been here. We've also appointed the head of marketing, who just joined us a month ago now, Mr. Bronson Mugabela, and um, We've also appointed the volunteer manager and the team liaison manager. Uh, those are the new appointments that we've made so far. Uh, thank you. We we'll go to the next slide. Uh, achievements to date is that we've achieved, we've launched the Vitality Netball World Cup logo. We've also launched the telecom uh, activation campaign, which was done on the, in, in January. We've also uh, announced the umpires have been selected. They were announced by World Netball, uh, which we've got 17 umpires, six UAPs and technical officials and statisticians. And most of the people that have been appointed are also from South Africa. We also celebrated our 200 days to go. And we went live with our second phase of ticket on the 10th of February. The competition schedule has been finalized and has been shared with the teams. Uh, we also, the ticket order form for teams, we've asked the teams to submit orders for the tickets uh, over and above what they are going to be getting. And also the following plans have been forwarded to Netball for review, which is the medical plan, our accreditation uh, plan, and the Congress and Candlelight concept plans. Uh, we also, the launch, the BIP was also launched with the announcement of the vitality. And currently, we've also up, went on an advert for the volunteers. 
which closed on the 15th, and we received just under 10,000 applications. We are intending to appoint 300 uh, volunteers. So currently the, the team is busy now with the identifying where we're we going to send those uh, volunteers and also with the vetting process before we can then do interviews. Uh, the launch of the logo was done. I, the previous years, our broadcast partners has already been a, 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 a launched. Our one day celebration, the ball launch, which is our Gilbert uh, Kanya, the name of our ball is Kanya. Our countdown clocks and the mascot reveal was done. Uh, Let's was, was 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 revealed. We did also a sponsorship launch. Uh, currently, we 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 also have a four three sponsors that have been uh, have been confirmed, which are on the first tier, which is Telcom, Spa, and Vitality. And we are finalizing uh, other sponsors that we should be launching soon on the second tier. And also, uh, we finalized the agreement with the Southern Sun as our broadcaster, I mean, not our broadcaster, as our uh, hotel uh, accommodation uh, partner. The tickets and tour packages are also on the website. They are doing well. The tour packages, most countries are buying tour packages, which will include the accommodation uh, tour packages that we've put together and also the tickets. And the teams have been confirmed. Uh, Yes, go to the next slide. <clears throat> the hashtags that have been approved by the board are these three, which is NWC 2023, hashtag put your hands up, and hashtag uh, make ne ne fashionable. The activations that we've done to date, we did the pre sona event in Cape Town at the Escape. Uh, the sponsorship of Discovery to us done in Gauteng, the telecom campaign, the big work in Pretoria, the Nelson Mandela Remembrance Walk, uh, the school sport champions, the national netball championships, the rugby sevens, we also had a mascot race where well, they participated. Uh, the Gauteng Marathon, we've done the activation there, also at the Winnie Mandela Museum, the Gauteng Community Games, the G Sports for Girls, Soweto Marathon, the Quad Series Meet and Grid, and also around the Western Cape when the murals are being uh, are being unveiled and also the handing over of courts. We've also used different medias for these campaigns, your TV radio stations. We were running a campaign on the Supersport, SABC, and also EN ENCA, and also on the various radio stations within the SABC, including also on social media. Next slide. The sponsorship, I, I've spoken about them. You can go to the next one. The global broadcasters that will be covering the event that have now been confirmed. You've got Supersport, uh, SABC. You also, in the Sub-Saharan Africa, you'll also have Supersport. Uh, in UK, Sky Sports and BBC. And Australia, Fox Sport will be uh, covering the event. And New Zealand is Sky Sport. Caribbean is the Flow Sport. And Malaysia is Astro. Uh, we've also received a request from Zimbabwe who also wants to cover the event. Next slide. Uh, the pending sponsorship date currently we are finalizing with the, with the uh, World Netball. It's the one for AXA. AXA, they've uh, indicated that they want us to also recognize them as they'll be assisting with the activations and the marketing at the airport. And Red Bull, Sage, Coca-Cola, Wundai Mercedes, and Hollywood Beds. Next slide. The training venues that have been confirmed, it's a, we're going to be having two floors at the University of Cape Town, the Cape Town Military Base, and also we'll use CTCC1 and CTICC2 as a training venues. Next slide. <clears throat> In terms of the accommodation, the teams have confirmed they had a choice to choose between the three hotels so far. Uh, Seven teams have chose to be at the Southern San Waterfront, and Sun Square is Jamaica, Singapore, Trinidad and Tobacco. And Stay Easy, you've got Barbados, Fiji, Malawi, and Sri Lanka. We haven't received any correspondence from Uganda and Zimbabwe. Those are the two outstanding. Next slide. Uh, I think here is just the, number, the people that have been appointed as the umpires. You've got one from South Africa and others from Scotland, England, New Zealand. You can go to the next slide. We won't go through all the names. 
So we decided people, uh, empires that have been confirmed, it's a mixture from two from South Africa, Australia, England, they've been taken from all the countries. Uh, next slide. And the statisticians are all from South Africa and one is from Botswana. Those are the ones that will be taking the states during the Netball World Cup. Uh, the bench officials are all from South Africa that will be uh, officiating at the event. Next slide. In terms of the packing, we've also negotiated with CTICC1 that they'll give us P1, which has got 1,100 days. Uh, 500 will be used for hospitality guests and 500 will be sold uh, uh, to, to as, a, as part of the packages. And P3 has been allocated for VVIPs, VIP and LOC. And the Civic Center, we are going to be doing a pack and ride it to the CTICC as a they wouldn't be, we wouldn't be allowing uh, cars to go through except those that have permits. And there will also be a remote search park, which will be at the CTICC truck staking area. Next slide. The medical plan has also been submitted uh, with the mandate being to uh, ensure that there's a provision of health and medical services for the duration of the NWC 2023 and also maintaining the safety measures to reduce the possibility effects of any adverse incident that may occur. The Department of Health is also working in conjunction with the Western Cape Provincial Department of Health uh, and also the SA Military Health Services. Service provided will include the uh, primary health care, emergency medical services, hospital preparedness, environmental health, and communicable disease and port health services. The objectives is that we want to have a port health services at all ports of entry, emergency medical services provided for at all the hotels and venues, and medical room established at the event itself at CTICC, both venues, and the EMS pre-deployed to staging area in the event of a mass casualty situation. And all hospitals have been prepared and placed on standby around uh, Cape Town. All accommodation and conference venues uh, are accredited in terms of the environmental health and best, best practices. And communicable outbreak response and management systems are also in place and on standby, are placed on standby. Next slide. Uh, I think the common and command and control, the national health is working with the provincial uh, health operations center and also with the net joints and prop joints and the medical operations center and the venue operations center. You can go to the next slide, Akona, you can leave this because they are going to be working with SEBS, uh, AXA, and the city of Cape Town. Uh, it just takes time to load. Jump this slide. Let's go to the other one. In terms of security, we are co there is a cooperation with South African uh, Police Services. Uh, team security and security also at team base hotel and VIP security spectator safety and also international cooperation. <clears throat> Next slide. Uh, also, the team security is the primary responsibilities of the state in line with the government uh, guaranteed signed by the ministers. Flows protection and escort services will be provided by SEPS at, uh, and the whole city police. Subject to the risk analysis, the team security contingent will consist of four members of the National Intervention Unit of SEPS, and the role of private security companies will be very limited and regulated by SAIRA, ICASA, and SAPS, and also SSA. Detailed technical plans for PMA security will have to be developed by SEPS, and SEPS will provide also two police team liaison officers for each team. <clears throat> Next slide. And in terms of the airport security, the objective there is to prevent exposure to the public and minimize disruption to airport operations. Team must not go through the general terminals. We also want to ensure that they have a, a dedicated uh, terminal lane. And the following measures will be applied. There will be a dedicated uh, immigration lanes for NWC 2023 family. The general policy and overall security status at the airport shall be increased prior to the start of the event. This will also include the inner and outer parameters of the airport. And the participating teams are also to be met on arrival by the security and the team liaison officers at the airport. And team officials and VIPs and certain stakeholders are to travel to their hotels under escort as well. Uh, also in terms of the team security liaison, uh, SEPS has indicated that they will provide us with the TSLO team security liaison officers for the NWC. 
Uh, they will also submit those names. Uh, TSO, TSLO will be assigned to each participating country and will stay with the team throughout their stay. It's the team's point of contact for all security related issues and also it's a close, they will work in close contact with the local police service and under the command of the head of police operation at the respective venue authority center. A constant exchange of information between the team security liaison and the team liaison and the team transport manager should be ensured to ensure that at all times they are all working uh, on the same objectives and they will stay with the teams at the base hotel and accompany them at all their journeys. Next slide. Uh, in terms of international cooperation, uh, participating countries will also be requested to send their country's police liaison officers to act as spotters and liaison officers. The net joint will, in conjunction with the OC, establish an international liaison center with the focus areas being <coughs> Hooliganism, terrorism, or political extre extremism, fan support services, human trafficking, and forced prostitution, and prevention and detention detection of fraud. The International Liaison, the Safety and Security Division, will also do a presentation to DERCO and the embassy's representative of the 16 nations participating countries. And it is noted that some PMAs have requested uh, the OC and SAF to address the PMA specific accreditation requirements. There is also an ongoing one-on-one -on -one engagement uh, with some of the PMA security representatives and the intelligence coordinating committees involved in country and PMA specific risk analysis and corresponding security levels have also been agreed to. SEPS is established an international cooperation center in which the intelligence services of the 16 uh, PMAs will be represented. In terms of ticketing, our ticketing strategy has been approved by Bot and World Net, uh, Netball, and it's currently we've already gone on ticket live on ticketing. We are going to be having 60 games. The tickets are sold in sessions. It's two games uh, for 27 sessions, which is 54 games, and there will also be uh, two sessions where there will be three games played uh, in, in that session. Uh, we are looking at about 108 seats, and after you've taken out the complimentary and entitlement. Uh, tickets, we are looking at around 81,000 tickets that will go uh, on sale. The CTICC one, which is our, our arena one, the main arena has 5,000 seat capacity and the uh, arena two, 1,200 seat capacity. Uh, next slide. In terms of safeguarding, uh, which is for safe and inclusive spot, the work is to provide a fair and and respective for environment for all, free from all non accidental violence such as harassment, abuse, corruption, anti doping, and manipulation of competition, and also resulting in a fun and enjoyable experience for all. Uh, the objective of safeguarding is to ensure that the safe sport team provide a holistic approach to safeguarding all participants, volunteers, LOC at the games, and the emphasis is on minimizing the risk by, re by reviewing existing policies for the games to ensure they deal with safeguarding procedures, educating and empowering all participants, volunteers, LOC also about their rights, and protecting all stakeholders through proper system and procedure, and also providing a 24-hour reporting system and managing reported incident and submitting a final game report after the tournament. There will also be a training program and the procedures that is going to be in place. We have the training plan available where also we are going to be doing training for the welfare and safeguarding manager who liaise with other experts who can offer and share their knowledge. Um, we are also going to be training the volunteers, the team managers, and all participants in the games. Uh, and also volunteers will also, all of them will be vetted. And they'll also have to sign a code of conduct. Next slide. The match schedule, we are going to have a phase one, which is the preliminary stage, which is a round robin, uh, which is from day one to day three. And from Day four, we are going to go to crossover stage where also it will be a round robin. Uh, the group will have three groups again, group E, F, and G. And group E will be the bottom placed teams from uh, group A, B, C, and G. And group F will be the six teams that will be at the top three from group A and B. 
and Group G will be six teams being the top from uh, Group C and D. So at this stage, we don't know the teams that will be playing at phase two from day four to seven. And from day eight to 10, it will be your final classification games, which will include your playoffs, matches, and the semifinals and the finals. Next slide. Go to the next one. <clears throat> uh, currently, the packages that we've done on the top packages, the countries that have shown interest and are buying those top packages, you've got Australia, New Zealand, Europe, uh, in South Africa, the Sports Nation, Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad, and Tobacco. In terms of hospitality, further to the final confirmation, we're looking at the following for our partners. A VIP partners hospitality area, which will be used for our partners and key stakeholders. We're also going to be having another hospitality based on demand and relative expenses. We'll offer our partners on first come, first serve the opportunity to purchase additional hospitality packages for their own partners and staff and for their own utilization at their discretion. The trophy tour, uh, currently we have been having meetings with provinces and we have received the submission, the, the venues for the trophy, uh, including their plans from KZN. Gauteng has also given us their plans in Pumalanga, in Popo Northwest and Free State. Northern Cape, Eastern Cape and the West, uh, Western Cape have indicated that they will submit them by close of business today. The key date for us going forward is the 100 days, which will be celebrated on the 19th of uh, April. And the arrival of the trophy will be on the 23rd of May. The trophy before arriving at Kinshaka, it will have to travel through Africa to the three countries, being Uganda, Malawi, and Zimbabwe, those that will be participating. And then there after then it will go to Kinshaka and travel to other provinces. Uh, the 50 days to go will be celebrated in June. And the NWC 2023 president will open from the 21st of July when the teams and officials uh, arrive. Uh, the meeting and functions will be from the 21st to the 27th of July. Uh, on the 25th of July, the World Net Board will have their board meeting at the Western Hotel. And on the 26th to the 27th, it will be the World Net Board Congress. And the, on the 26th, we are also in the evening going to have the candlelight ceremony which is where the teams and the officials take uh, their oath. And we'll also have a welcome dinner on the 27th uh, of July. The venues have not yet been confirmed. Uh, Western Cape have indicated that they would want to host the candlelight at the Arts Cape, and the city is still in negotiation uh, with the respective venue for the welcome dinner. And on the 28th, we'll have our opening ceremony and our closing ceremony on the, which is a medal ceremony on the 6th of August. And on the 7th, the teams will be leaving and the tournament will close. Next slide. <clears throat> in terms of the legacy, we have to do legacy in Botswana, Ghana, and the US, which was uh, through uh, World Netball. We have done the, started with the legacy in Botswana. Go to the next slide where we've also trained uh, some people in December, we embarked on the next phase, which was the Ghana. The program took place from the 28th of November to the 2nd of December, where 30 coaches and umpires and technical officials participated. The second phase is scheduled to take place sometime this year. We are just waiting for Ghana to finalize their renewal with the World Netball membership. Next slide. Uh, also, in terms of the, uh, I think this one we've also presented it the last time that we've also been training the statisticians on our timing, scoring, and result system. We started with the training uh, in August and is still continuing at the various uh, tournaments that we've held. Next slide. I'll hand over to Tabang to take us through the budget, our 18 CFO. Tabang, over to you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Tilly. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. Let me take this opportunity also to greet all uh, the chairperson and the honorable members. 
take the opportunity to also greet the, the chairperson of our board and the members of the board and the LOC and the ADG with, with the team. Uh, and, and and thank you very much. Uh, chairperson, I'll, I'll go to the, the slides that, that, that speaks to uh, the budget. Some of the issues have already been touched on by the TD. So uh, with your permission, I will, I would like to do and, and, and get through into items that, that may need. Uh, uh, Akona, uh, if you can just please go to the next slide. Uh, Chairperson, maybe while we're here, I must, I must take the opportunity to announce that we have just concluded uh, the audit process for the uh, annual financial statements that are ending on the 31st of March. We, we got a clean audit. I know that the committee had indicated before that we needed uh, to provide this uh, audited annual financial statement, and this would uh, definitely do and send a, a copy to, to the members, uh, the chairperson, to you. Uh, as we go through, this is just, this is an overview of, of different uh, uh, revenue streams that we have uh, in terms of the LOC and how they are structured, chair, uh, as as you would remember that uh, we we are using the the, the different time slots uh, which which uh, will form the basis and from which we compare our budget. Uh, the first one being the date, which is was in twenty eighteen. Of there was a budget in the bid, and then there was an assessment when we signed after. Uh, the, the the country won the bid. We signed the head of terms in 2019, and we provided uh, another uh, document uh, uh, with its own budget. Uh, and we also said that we are guaranteeing uh, that there will be a, a profit of this much. And now the current budget will always be compared to this uh, uh, two uh, budget. Point of order, Chair. Yes, Honorable Mishon. I sincerely apologize, Chair. I think it's an upbecoming of Inet Paul. This is the second presentation. They don't have their financials. I've just seen this presentation. I don't have it. And it's uncalled for even the audited financial statement. We requested it last year. To date, we don't have it. I think they must make sure that they do things according to the code because we cannot accept the presentation of us presenter just now because we have to financials, we have to scrutinize, see the credit and the debits. Now we don't see anything because this is new. We cannot allow them to present it to us. Thank you very much. Honorable uh, Mshongo, uh, I'm hearing himself saying that they are going to forward to us, but correctly so they were supposed to forward it to us before they can present to us. Uh, so uh, I'm suspecting that Taban uh, maybe must leave this part of uh, the, their financial uh, audited or just talk to and uh, you must do what you were supposed to do. As you we were saying, even your good self that we did ask, but you didn't forward it. Uh, do you understand it, Thank you, Honorable Thank you, thank you, Chair. Yes, I, I, I understand, Chair. We, 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 we the, this, I, uh, this is just the presentation on the budget, Chair. That in we, fact, we in, had provided in, 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 in fact, uh, according to us, thirty first of March, uh, you suppose uh, to account according to uh, the financial year. So which means we'll be needing that uh, 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 as black and white. Uh, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Chair. We, we will uh, send it through today, the, the, the copy of the financials, and we apologize for not sending them through. Uh, we 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 will make a presentation relating specifically to the financials as as we appear before the the the, the committee uh, chairperson. Uh, so for now, it's just this is just a presentation of the actual budget as it stands now, uh, chairperson. 
uh, uh, broken down into different uh, revenues to revenue streams and anticipated uh, revenues that we want to do we, uh, at the present moment are uh, in finalizing the negotiations with our sponsors as, as it has already been alluded to that we have uh, we are in the finalization of the the, the first tier sponsorship which is the title sponsor which is vitality and the two premium sponsor which is telecom and spa and we will be negotiating with all the other uh, sponsors uh, the other ones will be the ones that actually provide money to deal with uh, budget relieving items uh, the issue of the ticketing uh, as it has already been alluded to uh, we are getting a regular report about how the ticket sales are going. Uh, we have been getting a lot of support, uh, particularly through the IMC, uh, where we have specific uh, areas or in countries where the tickets are not sold. Uh, we must uh, have a discussion with the, the Department of International Affairs to see whether we cannot get assistance, uh, have a focused type of uh, marketing in those areas so that uh, those countries like your Zimbabwe, your Uganda, they, they are able to see that uh, the tickets have been out and, and we are anticipating that uh, they will they will be increasing the numbers. The matters of merchandising and licensing chair, we have negotiated with uh, the service providers. We have found one who is able to uh, by uh, the whole system, they have a merchandising and licensing system. We are finalizing the contract as well. We had initially projected that we are going to make uh, 2.5 million on, on the specific items. And we have been guided and advised through the IMC to say we have to make sure that uh, this, we are re realistic in our approach when we project some of these figures and make sure that. Point of order, sure. Yes, Chair, I've never seen this. I think under your watch, we cannot have just a blank presentation or a verbal presentation because there are no slides that are going through that we've received. Now, it's wrong for us to allow the Honorable Member Tabang to present whatever that he's saying verbally. I can't follow, can't make notes so quickly. Now, can he stop doing this so-called presentation verbally? Thank you. Um, honor, honorable members, uh, can can we look at the at our 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 um, presentations which were sent to us, and go just now and look at it, because according to me, this uh, presentation which is in, on the screen is part of. The, the package that we've, we've got it, let alone the, what you were saying that come the, uh, what you call the 31st, we need it, uh, all, all, all what we wanted. Can you everyone go and peruse in your, in your what you call emails? Uh, this slide that you were on it, it's, it's within uh, our package. Whilst we are looking at that, please uh, go on at among us members because they are going to check in their emails, I think. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, the, the following uh, item of revenue is the support that we uh, continuously get from uh, the Department of, of Sports, Arts and Culture. Uh, as, as you have uh, heard when the the presentation on the overview was made that uh, we 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 receiving uh, three branches of of thirty million rands, uh, and and this is the line that we are showing, and then from the uh, Western Cape we getting a transfer as well from of of uh, five million rands. They were also just awaiting the finalization of the financial statement to give us the money we have already concluded on the business plans for the. 5 million and the 30 million. We are also then expecting, we have a lot of support now to engage with the city where we are expecting them to give us a, 
the six million they have actually contributed 175,000 in the past. So those are the three uh, stakeholders which uh, also forms part of the LOC uh, and, and their contribution as projected. We also have uh, anticipated revenue from uh, accommodation commission, travel rebates and uh, uh, VIK that we are expecting uh, from when we do VIK with, with a, a specific hotel that we have signed the contract with, that there will be so much VIK that we do and we'll keep on updating on how much money in terms of value, how much did we have. The accommodation charges, uh, Chaperson, has to do with uh, the teams at the present moment in all the three hotels. We are doing reservations for them, although they are going to pay over that money to us and we are like a conduit, but we have to reflect each and every money that comes in and that is paid over to the hotels. Then there's issues that has to do with hospitality income. We are at the finalization of uh, you know, structuring how we want hospitality to be done. The hospitality that has to be done by the LOC to service all uh, you know, the necessary stakeholders. The hospitality that we can possibly sell to sponsors uh, you know, by creating uh, the proper venue or space for them to come and bring in. Uh, there's, there's a potential uh, revenue that can be derived from hospitality income. Uh, we had done uh, finalizing our list of inventory, whether we have parking. As you know, that parking is one of those things that are difficult. But one of the other areas that have been raised where we have to be careful is the issues of fan parks. At the present moment, we are expecting fan parks to be uh, done by provinces and, and municipalities, as, as you'd see in the Western Cape. They have already then engaged municipalities to deal with the issues of fan parks. So we, we need to relook at this and say, what realistically can we make money out of fan parks? And even if we were to sell merchandising, uh, that money will go to merchandising instead of dealing with fan parks. So we, these are some of the things that we are reviewing and we are engaging with uh, you know, different, uh, the city to say, uh, how, how is this uh, uh, possibly can be done? And we're getting advice uh, as, as we look at all these revenue, different revenue uh, streams. The last three, uh, Chaperson, has to do with, we have entered into a contract with the host broadcaster, Supersport, and we have also entered into uh, a contract with SABC and what we used to call Telcom One, which is part of SABC. So these are all the possible revenue sources that we have to use. And the reason why we are insisting on making sure is because we, we need to use these revenue sources to make sure that we have sufficient money that sustained the budget in terms of all the other expenditure items that are there. Uh, that's why it took uh, quite a lengthy time in just trying to explain each and every line item. And uh, uh, if you can just go to the next one, uh, uh, Akona. Yes, this is just to show uh, the, 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 the breakdown between the public funding that we have uh, uh, received. As I have said, that we get a lot of support from uh, our national department and, and, and they keep on even now to the technical IMC where uh, the, there's the support. We just need to continuously reconcile and you know, confirmation of the monies that have been paid and this up to so far is the money that has been accruing to uh, our side, uh, along with the the DCAS in the Western Cape and the city, and uh, you know the National Federation as well, uh, Chairperson, that they have these contributions that they make. So the public funding is is where we put all those clubs together. The rest is just another group of commercial funding, which include all other categories of income. And this is just the pattern between how did we fare between 2018 when we were signing the bid, the head of terms in 2019, and the current budget. Uh, can you go to the next one? Yes, as we have said, Jefferson, these are percentages in terms of the total revenue that we have uh, and a breakdown of the commercial funding as to how much of sponsorship. Uh, at the present moment, the projection is based on all the sponsors that 
We have already spoken to that has shown interest, all the contracts that have been signed. And, and this is, there might be more money that can be raised from possible sponsorship to say, some will come with money and will come with value added. Some will be sponsors who will deal with specific items that have to do with a budget relieving items. And, and, and so that's, that's why we're saying uh, this is a breakdown of the commercial side of uh, all the, the, the revenues that we have projected. Uh, the next one. Yes, this is just a narrative just to explain uh, the slide above. If you can just go to, uh, to the next one. Yes, that, that was the, 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 the top part of, of, of the budget or the, the money part. If, if I were to say so, uh, the next uh, remaining slides are just giving just an indication of how the bottom part of the budget uh, is structured. Uh, we, we have structured, uh, you know, the total expenditure in terms of four different areas. The, the business operation cost, which constitute 20% of the total expenditure budget, the tournament operation cost, these are directly related to the delivery of the actual event. Uh, issues that have already been mentioned, uh, uh, issues of the uh, ceremonies like welcome, you know, candlelight welcome event, opening awarding ceremonies, issues that relates to uh, the venue itself, the floors, the training venues, video presentations, the matters that has to do with seatings. And most of these uh, cost drivers chair, these are cost drivers that some have already been confirmed. Some we still have to make sure that we then leverage and talk to you know, other departments to say, if you are dealing with the opening ceremony, we want a spectacular, but that spectacular must have a African element in it. But within that hour, we must have a parade and we must have drums and we must have entertainment and speeches, we are now uh, you know, talking to the art section of the Department of Sports, talking to tourism, so that we see how we leverage you know, and piggyback on the others who may already have uh, resources here when we might not have enough to deal with those. So uh, the issues of security, talking to the city to say, can the city assist on this and that? And they will tell us that where they can, you know, medical services, the Department of Health, both national and provincial, uh, the same applies to things like the candlelight dinner. Although it's a netball related event, the Department of Western Cape uh, of the, the, the Culture and Arts and Sports has, has, has come and say they will finance some of the activities which are there. So the, the business, the tournament operations has to do with the core and to make sure that we deliver on, on the actual event. However, as you, 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 you you will remember that there's also support that we get from the national department to dealing with provinces on the trophy tour, uh, to deal with provinces on the issues of fan parks, and 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 so that's where we are at the present moment uh, to 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 sit down with them and say how can we get assistance if we might not have sufficient resources to cover for those. Um, the last, the other two is just the personal cost uh, that constitute eight percent of the total budget, and then. The last one is the international hosting fees. Uh, as you remember that uh, when they were bidding, when the bidding started, there were specific international hosting fees as the DDG has already alluded to. Some of them have already been uh, paid over, but there's still some which are still outstanding. So this is how the budget is broken down in terms of the expenditure. Uh, 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 can you go to the next slide? Uh, these are just those line items, uh, and equally, they are also compared to the, the 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 baseline being the budget which was done in 2018, uh, the budget which was uh, also done when we were signing the head of terms and the opening agreement. Uh, this compared to the current and the current projections uh, in terms of business operations, uh, tournament operations, and personal cost and and hosting fees. And that, that actually constitutes the budget uh, in total, both the revenue and uh, the, 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 the expenditure part. Uh, can we go to the next slide? 
this is just a presentation of, of the same issues that uh, to show that uh, bet between 2018 and the current, uh, there might be issues of COVID that then affected because you, 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 you'll you see that, uh, for instance, some of the hosting fees might have been uh, guaranteed in pounds, which was maybe 18 rents at a certain point in time. But if there's still an outstanding amount, it might have increased and we might have, uh, you know, exchange losses. And some of these things will keep on, you know, showing that this is the extent of uh, the shortfall. If we had a shortfall on an expenditure that might have been projected differently uh, during the time that we incurred uh, such an expenditure. Uh, can we go to the, the next one? Yes, so, so this is just uh, taking the revenue against the expenditure and projecting what possibly might be a projected revenue. Uh, however, uh, we, we, we were advised again to be prudent, to say in as much as we can project, we have to make sure that on the projections that we have not guaranteed, let's finalize the contracts that we need to sign with uh, commercial funding. At least it's easy with public funding because you know, these commitments are done and they go through uh, you know, a vigorous process and we know that this money will be received. But with commercial funding, we have to make sure that we balance uh, because as you would know that uh, all the sponsors on everyone who's contributing to the event, they also want certain things you know, the rights that have been, you know, given to us, they would want to have exposure on this and exposure on that. So these are the balances that we, we are currently making sure that we 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 finalizing on those things, uh, Chairperson. Uh, I think for now, Chairperson, uh, with your permission, I will, I will, I think this is my last slide. Hey, thank you so, so much, Tabang. Um, according to our program now, uh, um, we are coming. Uh, let me thank, thank all the presenters, thanking the chairperson, uh, whose, whose patience, and the, everybody who is here to come and uh, <clears throat> present, starting from the department. Let me now get to the, the honorable members. This is the time for uh, for deliberations. Uh, I'm noting the hands. The first hand is Honorable Mishongo. Uh, the second hand is Honorable uh, Adams. The third hand is Honorable Zondi. The fourth is Honorable uh, uh, Van Dijk. Uh, the next one is uh, Honorable Malomani. Uh, the other hand is Honorable Sibia. On that order, Honorable Members, Honorable Mishango. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Chairperson, welcome the presentation. And uh, on a lighter note, we note that this World Cup will be hosted in a DA-led province, but nonetheless, it's for South Africa. Chairperson, how much is the wooden floor? I think the DDG alluded to that. I wanted to find out how much does it cost for a wooden floor and how many wooden floor are we going to have? And, you know, one of the things we are ambassadors as members of parliament, but it's shocking to see that we are not invited to this so-called legacy uh, project, the, your big walk, Mandela Museum activation. Chair, am I out of order? I'm sorry, let me keep close. <laughs> we are raising points that I wanted to say. When you did the, what we are raising is that you are hearing that they've been doing this without the committee knowing it. Thank you, let me switch off, let me mute. Okay, Chair. I think it's totally wrong. And you know, you can, I'm not just taking credit. I think our, as members of parliament, they can check our Facebook, our Twitter, we are promoting this. We are marketing this, but we are not informed. It's wrong and we're doing an oversight work towards the World Cup. 
Chair, I wanted to find out to date how many tickets have been sold to date. And honestly enough, I don't see, yes, we'll get the audited financial statement, which is it's late and it's overdue and we cannot do our oversight work. Plus minus 90 million has been spent from uh, taxpayers' money, but we're not sure exactly what does this entail in a audited financial statement. Chair, I want to echo the views. I've spoken to the president and he's not here, but I see that they've identified different provinces. You know, I'm serving in a, a, a constituency with the Orange Farm. We don't have a netball court in Orange Farm. And I think it's high time that uh, these developments, this uh, sporting court must be uh, uh, in the grassroots here, so Orange Farm. It would be nice for us to have a netball court sponsored by this legacy uh, fund. Chair, who will maintain this legacy uh, uh, court after the World Cup? And what is the budget for this, uh, uh, for maintenance uh, for all this legacy project? And what is the reason for the department to include the sports trust to finalize the suppliers? Why this is not done internally? What is the, is the spot trust a, a, an agent that seeks for suppliers for us to host events like the World Cup? Why this is not done internally? Why about this sports trust? I question the sports trust chair, and I think in future we have to investigate the sports trust. Everything sports trust. This thing just to open for tender. Why is it going to sports trust? Chair, I wanted to find out when are they going to appoint the financial uh, the acting person in Utabang? When are they going to appoint the actual uh, financial leader or financial head? And why it's not even advertised? If it has been advertised, which newspapers uh, they've advertised uh, the, the position Yaga acting Yaga a financial head? Chair. I, I thought we'll get more details on the relationship. You know, one of the things last time we spoke about, even today, the, I'm not sure how many members of the LOC are here. And if I can get the number, and we know good how many are absent, because we've never had the full house of the LOC members attending this. And there were questions that they were not moving according to the speed, and the minister inter intervened and we welcome that, but I'm not sure the progress, especially between the relationship between the NA, uh, uh, national uh, netball, South African netball, my LOC, because it seems that so these hidden pushes that we're not even aware of, we see it on the newspaper. But for now, thank you very much, Shekhesson. Thank you. We have got 10 questions on the uh, Thank you, I've noted your questions, hoping that they have all noted. Uh, the next uh, honorable member is Honorable Adams. Thank you very much, Chairperson. And a very good morning to all members on the platform. Chairperson, let me also welcome the presentation. Although I have some questions to ask or clarity on some issues. My first question. Uh, will be to DSEC chair on slide 16. I noticed that you set aside 9 million rand for earmarking for supporting South Africa's hosting of World Cup. I also noticed that this is to mobilize more than 6,000 people to participate in the public view uh, programs. My question, how will you handle it when more of 6,000 participants apply to take part in the programs? And then Chairperson, um, and the provincial activity support for, from conditional grant, will the support be based on provinces who indicated their interest to participate? Do they have to submit a business plan or to plan to qualify in any programs? Or, or how will they be nominated or selected to qualify 
to take um, to participate in those programs. Uh, chairperson, I will ask my all my questions is not that much so that uh, I don't have to go for a second round. And chairperson regarding ring fence funding to assist provinces, did DSEC has a breakdown on provinces or will it be done accordingly, the applications and programs? Do DSEC has a specific application form for provinces to apply to take um, to participate? And then on budget, the score trucks process of finale finalizing a new supplier for the project and resumption to complete the project at the beginning of uh, March 2023. My question was there a problem with a previous supplier? Can uh, DSEC please uh, give indication on this matter? And then Chairperson on LOC, uh, I saw there that uh, team security lines and offices it's very good to hear the safety preparations of our people. Are there any time frames on these preparations? And then under ticket sales, Jefferson, I saw that the opening ceremony uh, of 28 July 2023 already sold out. How will you handle um, our people who don't have the opportunity to buy tickets? I thank you, Chairperson. Okay. Thank you, Honorable uh, Adams. Honorable Sondi. Thanks, Chair. Good morning uh, to you, to the department led by Acting Teaching Dima and the LOC and all our guests. Uh, uh, good morning, Chair. Chair, I feel. Firstly, Chair, I wish to commend the LOC on the publicity. Uh, last time we met them, we raised a concern about the publicity coupled with the budget uh, because the publicity of any event or any campaign needs a, a budget, but uh, we have seen the media coverage now uh, on social media and uh, the community outreach uh, that is that is done by the minister in the department. Now we know uh, and we are expecting the, the, the tournament to go well uh, as, man, as months uh, are a, a closing by. Chair, on on a lighter note, we are we are noting the the, the two courts at Lutai in Tepen, which is a key one. Gaguboga captain, angaza kuanga ngani la petro fiva. No banga gate na fire airport. But you are noting the chair, which is a. Uh, 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 that was on a lighter note, uh, but we, 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 we are noting uh, uh, the progress made so far, and uh, we, are, we are, we, 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 we comment the 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 LOC and the department of Bambisan. Uh, and the legacy pro, 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 project uh, chair. Uh, they are going very smoothly. Um, uh, we have not seen or had any uh, hassles or or, or or disruption of 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 any uh, kind, and that is commendable. Which means that. Uh, they are work with the community and the and, and the local leaders um, are, are, are reaping fruits now. 
we commend the department for that. And, 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 and that is laying foundation for all these projects to take a, a place in our local municipalities without uh, delaying. Chair, I wanted to know, uh, Jomane talk, talked about um, wooden floor. Yeah, number wooden floors. I beg what? I I I understand there 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 will be the legacy after the World Cup. Yeah, in less than. And that's an Igbo one. And I'm saying, but so much. The guys in Igbo na ye konga git. Now I want to to understand it. A correct so that man kulu man kulu me entengi asi. Here the 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 the, the, the two last questions. Uh, on the issue of the sponsors, I, I wish to know uh, the sponsors, they've mentioned the sponsors a uh, few, are they meeting your expectations uh, and need? Because they you 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 expect them to, to donate, but your need might be a, 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 a little bit uh, higher than the expectations. Uh, you 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 get from them. Are these sponsors uh, meet your expectation and need? The last one, Chai, is the issue of the ticket sales. I don't know uh, whether the ticket sales have been sold out on Zwanga, but if they are not uh, sold, when are you expecting the tickets to be sold out? Because uh, our courts are not very big. Uh, are you expecting them whether it's days, weeks, or months before the start of the tournament? When are you expecting the ticket sales to be sold out and said that uh, we our stadium will be full because uh, our tickets are sales? If not, uh, a, a month should be uh, days before, and your expectation should be this is the timeline that we are expecting them as to be sold out based on our, our projections. Uh, Chair, I think uh, I'm, I'm, I'm down for now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable uh, Zondi. Honorable Fandek. Thank you, Chief Persang. Um, thank you also for the opportunity um, and, and also for the presentation presented to us. My questions are as follow. Um, I just want to find out, it was revealed in a Netball a World Cup financial report at an IMC meeting that the budget is in a deficit of 34 million. Can you confirm this and please explain um, this and how you plan to address this? Who will be paying for it? My second question, um, why is there already a third DG appointed. What happened to the previous DGs? Then the Netball World, World Cup uh, 2023 official ball and countdown clock launch. How many countdown clocks were bought and at what cost? Um, where and how has it been distributed? And um, from what I understand, these the clocks are in a storage. If it is the case, uh, can you please explain that? Um, what was the uh, total cost of uh, this event, the official ball and countdown clock launch? Um, uh, is it possible that we can maybe get a breakdown of the total people invited to travel and accommodation? Um, then um, slide 13, on the umpire's appointment panel, um, I see Mrs. or Miss Marie Lou van der Merwe of South Africa feature there, um, and I want to bring uh, something to your attention. And I would like uh, Ms. Blanche Delaguer to maybe answer this. Um, there was an incident where Ms. Van der Merwe's name appeared in the same letter as Ms. Kloppers, Annie Kloppers, who's also been a coach. The latter um, resigned from Netball Exco and she lost the accreditation, but Ms. Marilou was promoted to this position. I want to know why they were treated differently and what formal complaint has been brought in against Ms. Kloppers. Um, I want to know if she received this in writing and if she was afforded a fair opportunity to respond to these accusations. Um, and then um, we, we, as the committee, I think we need the details of this. And I want um, Nepal South Africa to commit to provide us with um, a report on this um, case. Um, this person also lost the accreditation in, in World Netball, um, but till this date has not 
receive any form of documentation from Netball SA. And we need to know why a person that can still contribute in our country towards coaching was treated this way. Um, especially if we think that our um, uh, president of Netball, Ms. Um, Molokwane, sits on that World um, Netball uh, board. Then um, my follow, the next question I have is um, if you can maybe give us a breakdown of the cost implication of the appointment of uh, Kate Agnew from World Netball, who is doing oversight, um, who negotiated this from the start, and for whose account is this? Um, I also want to know if her role will be made permanent or is it a contract position and for how long? Um, then I want to know if maybe, it, I know it might be difficult to present us with that now, but if we can, while you did an audit um, and financial uh, reports uh, are compiled, if we can get a breakdown of the cost implication of admin, um, the administrative uh, staff, flights and accommodation so far, um, are they doing mostly Zoom meetings or are they flying um, from Cape Town to Johannesburg? What is the, the cost implication of that? And then by chance, is it possible that the committee can receive the recordings of board meetings? Thank you. Um, the next uh, honorable member, I was walking from where I was because now the electricity is back. Um, honorable Maloman. Thank you, Chair. Let me also welcome the report on the progress of the state of readiness from October 2022 to date towards the hosting of the Netball World Cup 2023. And the, also the achievements that they have been done. Let me also welcome that on the report. But on the first point that I want to appreciate, I really appreciate because I can see on the issue of broadcast, there is also SAPC spot so that even those who cannot afford, they can see on the SAPC spots, which the channels that everyone is having. The other matter that I want to speak about is about the issue of pending sponsorship that needs to be concluded because there is no time frame to say when are they going to conclude this sponsorship like Labo, Red Bull, Labo, those they've been named there. So I just want to check, do they have any time frame regarding the sponsorship that needs to be concluded. On the other matter, I think I was covered on the issue of the ticket sales, because now they're on the second phase of the ticket sales. I just wanna find out uh, out of the less complimentary ticket, which is 81,000, how many tickets have been sold now? And the issue of trophy tour, I can see that the province where I am, which is in Pumalanga, they've submitted the roadmap. I wish that maybe if I can also get the roadmap of Mpumalanga so that I can see where is the trophy going to be towed to. And also those who say didn't submit the trophy tour and on the presentation, uh, you said today, they said they will provide it today before the end of business. Give me a go shali gashle because because today we're in a committee. They're promising that they will send it today by the end of business. What were the challenges not to be sent before we set as a committee? And can it be also be reported to us as a committee? Because they promised that today, after the after the end of business today, maybe by tomorrow or before Monday, or by Monday, because it's a working day, that we get a report that those provinces have already submitted. Going back to the issue of ticket sale, I've seen that there is this thing here, Gold TV section, where the juniors are not given an opportunity. There are no tickets for juniors, but it is intended that if a parent want to buy a ticket and sit with her junior child, he or she must buy a ticket for an adult. And I can say that the tickets are from 17 years 
upwards. What about those kids who are 12, 13, 14, 15? I just want also that understanding and to say why on the Gold TV section, the juniors were not involved. Thank you, Chair. Oh, I, I wanted to say I'm done, Chair. Thank you. Oh, I was wondering what is going on. Honorable uh, CB. Thanks, Chairperson. Greetings to everyone. Uh, thanks for a, a progress report. Uh, without uh, repeating the questions which were covered by previous speakers, um, but uh, the, the vacancy of the financial officer, was it advertised or not? And I think the, even the, the people who are already invited, how many of them, I think most of the questions are covered. Thanks, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Sibia. Honorable Denise. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I would like to welcome and say thank you to the um, to the presentations. Um, Chairperson, I would like to start off with the uh, minutes of the previous meeting where the minister uh, made a comment on on the in his closing um, his closing statement about the mobilization, the marketing, and the communication with the public that is. Uh, I think of the highest peak, the minister said. And then the minister also said that he roped in one of the most experienced administrators in the country to deputize, deputize for the chairperson to drive the process. So I just would like to know where, what, what has happened since that, that intervention uh, came in. Uh, and, and is there any, uh, I expect good news uh, from, that, from that intervention. Uh, Chairperson, my question, my question is around the volunteers. Uh, I saw on Facebook there was an advert and I saw it in one of the slides. But I just would like to know how far did we get with the volunteers? Is there enough volunteers? Um, and, and, and how is that process going um, to make sure that everyone, as far as possible, in diversity, age, age levels, and so on is, is accommodated? Um, and then I support the questions, earlier questions on the on the public participation. And then I also would like just to know what, what role Darko is playing. Um, to can Darko play maybe the uh, in intervention to support the um the the Africa countries in particular, because this is a world world cup for Africa and, and then uh, for South Africa. So it's important that we pursue that um that avenue. Um Chairpersons, I also want to, to ask the, the, what is happening in the team, the team spirit, the preparations, the relationship between the coach, the players, and the support structures, uh, the whole local organizing committee. I'm not asking it because I think there's a problem, but I think it also is good if the committee can hear there's a, there's a positive, positive spirit and that moving forward from here, um, you know, it, it can only go go get better. So I just wanted to hear that part. And then out of the previous minutes, my last point, Chairperson, I've heard um, one of the members asking about a shortfall. Um, the last minutes actually referred to a surplus of 27 million after the event. So I just want to ask if that's still the situation or if it's changed financially, the budget, it's based on a budget, what has changed? Because I think in the last meeting, I also asked the question, or the answer was given from a question that all the money was not even spent yet um, because of the, the projects that are coming. So I just wanted clarity on the, on a previous question that indicated to a shortfall, while the previous minutes showed 
um, they would there's possibility of a surplus after the World Cup event. But um, I also would like to thank the the local organizing committee and the part, departmental senior officials, um, especially uh, Ms. Khan, for, for the work um, work done so far. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable uh, Dennis. I've got uh, very few questions. Uh, let me take this opportunity to thank the presenters, uh, uh, at least uh, even if uh, we are not uh, aware, how are you doing, Chairperson, the Deputy Chairperson, but that lull which uh, made us to call uh, uh, you in the last meeting saying that we can't uh, hear, we can't see, we can't hear the oomph. Uh, I can say as, as <coughs> if each one, we do see now that we are all over, which means uh, you did get uh, all these people who were saying that you, you telecom, you super sport, you whoever, SABC. Now we do um, uh, feel that uh, we are going to have a World Cup of a netball. Uh, uh, but, Honorable Dennis, Honorable Dennis, mute. Honorable Dennis, Honorable Dennis. Honorable Denise, yes, thank you. Um, but also in the in the presentation, Honorable Denise, please. Honorable Mflongo, please call uh, him in the phone or the Zolek. Um, uh, you know, uh, in the presentation of a department, uh, sometimes uh, really we need to. <clears throat> I don't know how are we going to get maybe as a department indicated in, in some of your reports, cause immediately that, uh, that there are provincial con conditional grants, uh, that they are looking at club developments uh, and support structures. Uh, you know, we are from different provinces and maybe we have other members of parliament who are not part of this committee, but who have got a very uh, a good interest on knowing what is going on in their uh, provinces. If we can get this information, because as we're sitting here, we'll get some members saying that would love that we, we must see this, this infrastructure and the, this illegal infrastructure in our provinces. If by a chance that you can give us, uh, we have got only nine provinces, uh, the indication you have got a slide here where you have said you have uh, uh, do this um, uh, handing over of the legacy courts Really, I'm emphasizing on the point raised. Uh, I don't know who's this uh, honorable member. Uh, it must not be uh, as, as business as usual. You are coming to our constituencies and uh, you know that in each province, there are members of parliament. It's worse with your own members who are serving in this department. And then just going there, we, Sometimes we cannot go uh, uh, because maybe of the program of parliament or because of ABC, but remember they are adults. They can ask a permission from, uh, uh, from parliament to be part of uh, whatever we are taking to our provinces. Uh, we have been, we have been um, cautioning a department uh, about this. We don't want to do the work of the department, but immediately that you are uh, sending deliverables in our uh, areas, a courtesy, a courtesy, 
uh, it's upon us that we do go or not, in order that also we must monitor if now the, the, there is a, a, a structure uh, that put in, in our uh, area constituency or in the municipal where the constituency is belonging. You have got a right to call the councillors uh, to, to, to talk to them that the, the, the maintenance of the, the, the structures that you are putting, how are they going to monitor? We can have even the provincial uh, sister departments that they must be involved. And being a, a, a member of parliament, you can even call the, the, the sister, a, a brother, a colleague saying that in this area, I'm, I'm deployed here. I know that we have got a constituency here. Can we uh, have a plan that we must get uh, to know what are the, uh, are the programs and what are the security measures of uh, looking after our structures in order that after 2023, we must not have this uh, white elephant uh, as this committee we're still having an outstanding problem of stadium, stadiums of 2010 that there was no one who's looking after is either municipality is is either the legislature. So it's very important that uh, we are not want uh, to be officials of department, but we want to be prioritized uh, because we're doing the oversight. But also, uh, I, I'm, I'm happy that uh, this uh, distributing, distributed of t-shirts, some other members as well speaking, their t-shirts are small as well sitting here and they can't uh, prioritize netball uh, Fridays. They must indicate to our uh, office uh, uh, secretariat, those who, who can't have uh, their t-shirts, let alone now that we don't know uh, that each department must maybe give us an information, uh, what is the role of the provincial uh, departments in, in, in sharing of t-shirts in these uh, schools, especially in the rural areas. They would love to themselves to see having uh, these t-shirts which they do see uh, in the urban, uh, not to all urban areas that uh, kids are having or clubs, uh, they do have these t-shirts. We want to popularize in this within 100 days, uh, which are, are left, uh, this net, net, Netball uh, World Cup is going to be here. And I was noting, uh, yes, I wanted to check. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm not the chairperson of, of my province. I'm the chairperson of the national uh, committee. Uh, it happened that I'm, 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 I'm here in Cape Town whilst I'm coming from Eastern Cape. Uh, this thing of volunteers, how do you do? Uh, and and, and you, you, you know, it's been off, especially when the, the, we, we are the host province here in Western Cape. Uh, we have a we have constituency offices uh, of all political parties, irrespective of political uh, party. I uh, would love to, to hear in order that when we're going to these constituencies, we must uh, have to tell that uh, maybe the spin-offs for the, the, the local people here in Western Cape, uh, what can they benefit? Uh, I'm, I'm thinking that this is the second time that we ask that. Uh, we are not saying that it's compelled that you must do ABC, but also uh, this thing of OAXA, even last time you were saying that you're still going to uh, have uh, time 
uh, that you must talk to Aska, As, Aksa, which is we're still saying is pending. You know what these uh, visitors and these um, uh, South Africans, they will be landing in the, in, in the airports. If until now it's still pending, uh, you must try to fast track what you are saying is it's, it's pending. Uh, so far, uh, we are seeing uh, that LOC, you are all out. We are seeing every weekend uh, the adverts, uh, the, the broadcasting of uh, the publicizing of the netball. But the only thing which we don't know which budget can assist that we must uh, um, do more uh, work assisting you in our uh, schools, clubs, that they must have these t-shirts. I don't know whether then in 2010 we were saving a huge budget because everybody will be seeing that the Fridays they were wearing a Bafana Bafana t-shirts. Ours, they are so scanty. I don't know what can we do to assist to publicize this uh, event which is going to uh, come to our country. I thank you. Uh, I'm suspecting uh, oh, this is a very interesting uh, day. Uh, we, we are having so much questions. Uh, maybe let me give the chairperson, which is, um, you'll be the last one, to, 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 the department is going to be the last. Let me start with uh, our LOC chairperson, allocate uh, uh, your colleagues accordingly and uh, everybody was taking notes. Now is the time uh, that we need to hear responses uh, from the presenters. We are starting with you, Chairperson. Thank you. Uh, no, th 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 thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. Uh, we've taken note of the questions. Uh, I think I'm going to ask uh, uh, Blanche to, talk to the issue of the wooden floors. Um, uh, as, as netball, I think she should be able to explain it. Uh, why, why wooden floors and explain what are wooden floors. And then I'm going to ask uh, uh, the TD to respond to uh, ticket sales, uh, issues of invitations and um, other aspects that are related to a department. And then the issue of the audited statement and the shortfalls May I request uh, Tabang to, to respond to that? And then I'll take other questions after they've just uh, uh, done their best to attend to some of the questions raised. Um, and then I also need to indicate, um, Chair, that I've noted the the question from Honorable uh, Dennis on the issue of the SPA protea. Um, I think I need to indicate that the issue of the team preparation uh, towards the game, it's the issue of, is a responsibility of Netball South Africa. Um, and I, I'm not sure if Blind will be able to assist on that one, uh, and, but just to indicate that that part does not fall part of our responsibility as the LOC. Ours is to prepare and deliver the World Cup. So may I then request Blanche just to start to kick off and then from there, the TD and Tabam. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, um, um, Chair. And honorable um, Madam Beauty, as the chair, I will try my best to, I've <laughs> tried to make notes while I'm listening to you. There's an echo in the office. Let me just um, close my office door because everyone's in a different office. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Honourable uh, Madam Beauty, um, the first question around the wooden sprung floors. Netball South Africa and, in, and um, also Africa 
are the only, um, were the only world countries participating at this high level without wooden sprung floors. Um, so Netball South Africa um, bought um, sprung, a, a sprung floor in 2005, the first one. When you take part in international competitions, it is a requirement, it's a rule to play on a wooden sprung floor. Um, and we never had one, so we got one. The rest of South Africa, all the provinces, although we have world-class players and high-performance players in our provinces and in our districts, they don't have a wooden sprung floor. Africa, although four of them, four of us are part of the World Cup in invitees, qualified to take part in World Cup, they don't have a wooden sprung floor. So if you train on a hard surface or outside, like we all know as little girls, um, it's actually very bad for the body, knees, ankles, and injuries happen. So that is just a little bit of history why the wooden sprung floor. In 2018, and I'm gonna try my best because I didn't open my World Cup bid document now. In 2018, when we um, prepared the bid to host, we were very mindful of the fact that we bid against New Zealand. Number one, number two sometimes, number two, number one sometimes in the world. They have hosted at that time three, four World Cups before us. We knew that it was going to be a tough, tough, tough presentation that we need to prepare and put forward to World Netball and all the adjudicators. So we have put the bid in. First of all, there's a requirement from World Netball. If you want to host the World Cup, you have to guarantee a million rand, a million pound profit, you have to secure that. So your budget needs to be prepared accordingly. First of all, we couldn't reach that amount because we, we based our, our projected budget on previous World Cups, countries support and, and the expenses and income, and we couldn't reach the million but they then declined it and advised us before it goes to the, um, the team, we should revisit the, the profit of finances. And then after consideration and plans and the assistance of the government, we reach that projected amount. Then after the, the and it, we handed in the, uh, the bid to host in August, if I remember June. Um, they, or just before that, I, I got a call and we were discussing, um, or we were asked, both countries, what is our legacy plans? So, and then they said the legacy plan will determine which country will be successful and be mindful. It should be something that improve the condition and the position of netball players and administrators. So at the time, the DG involved with this whole project was DG Alec Muemi. And he came back to us as the interim steering committee and he said, board, there's only one thing that we can do that the other countries can't do because they have it. And that is a wooden sprung floor for each province to, to, to allow them to be in the same position as the international netball countries. Train on a wooden sprung floor to prevent injuries and to be on the same level as others. So it was then told that I, I, we will also give two to Africa. So that was then immediately incorporated into the business and obviously the department um, sorted. I'm not too sure if that answers the, the questions. The cost at the time we, we 
Um, we tried to, to get local, we advertised finding local ten, uh, companies that could tender for flooring, but they were not familiar with a wooden sprung floor according to the FIBA accreditation. Um, we spoke to, to, to um, basketball, we spoke to dancing groups, everybody that uses a wooden sprung floor, the FIBA approved and accredited wasn't available. So we had to, to source overseas with the help of the other countries who, but who previously hosted um, World Cup, Singapore, New Zealand, England, and Australia. So we found different, um, different um, suppliers. Then, then, apologies for that, I'm putting it off. Then, um, so that's, that's the, the floor story, which is an um, absolutely great story that needs a lot of attention um, to the media. Um, then the other question was asked about the spa proteas, how's the mood, how's the team? I can confidently say it is a absolutely different team that came back from the Commonwealth Games. We, they were in camp with, with the um, coaches, the Australian coaches, and I want to, to mention to um, Madam Chair and the Honourable Members, um, Norma Plummer and, and, and Nicole Kuzak was part of the team before they left. We, we didn't newly appoint them. They were part of the team. One was the specialist coach. The other one was the mentor coach. So, the, and they just took the spaces now as head coaches. So they had a, um, a five week training camp in Stellenbosch and they came to Cape Town before the quad series. Now, if you look at the results for the quad series, yes, we did not um, came out first. We did not beat anyone, but the competition was absolutely um, fantastic and a good showcase and a an, um, big improvement. And the coach confidently said that she has tried every player because in her mind, 12 players should be good enough to take the World Cup bench and not only seven and the balance sit and watch netball. So she's happy, a lot of work to be done, and but she's happy with the results and the players' condition is excellent. They are um, being taken care of at the Stellenbosch Academy of Sports staff and the reports are very, very positive and, and um, accommodates every player's needs um, regarding if there's an injury and then the um, rehab uh, program afterwards. Then in just after the quad series, eight of the players um, who, has con has, who previously had the contract and was renewed, moved to the international team. One in Australia and the seven um, spread um, over the UK. They take part in their pro professional league matches. Um, it's, it's also um, assisting them to keep active, to play against um, very um, competitive teams, stronger teams, and assist them to, to keep their um, fitness, and it allows them to earn a, a salary. The balance of the group, the coach then approached Nickel South Africa and see, she suggested that um, the 15 of the squad that stays behind um, travel to Australia. She, she um, resides in, in Melbourne and she arranged for the team to train against um, teams in Australia. And that report came back as very, very um, successful. So the team is now on a rest and they will start with a training program on uh, the 7th or 8th of March for the whole month. So I can confidently say that 
the team is, is doing well and it's all well with their souls as well. And there's a lovely, um, there's a lovely atmosphere um, in the camp and the, the players are really get along so well. I must also mention um, Honorable um, uh, Chair was, was at the Quad Series and I hope others do, but the, the need for competition in, in, of this caliber was absolutely welcomed by the spectators. Our spectators, our South African spectators, Cape Town spectators, uh, really, we we felt so proud that we could present a almost full crowd every day, and not only for the South Africans, they actually supported the other countries when we didn't play. They enjoyed the good and quality netball, and therefore um, the support that we got. That's the team. I don't know if there's another question. I am very aware of the question. Madam um, um, Denise asked about Ani. Madam Chair, is that appropriate to talk about that now? So then you can. Thank you. So yeah, Ani Klopper, um, yes, it is it is a a matter that that is um, um, not we didn't respond to media um, allegations and stories and the manner how everything happened. We are always of the opinion that when something goes wrong with, with your current position in April South Africa, it doesn't mean the doors are closed or your, your career in the future, what you do um, is not important to us. It's all about the person and what had happened and how it happened. But confidence um, in this, um, on this platform, I can, I can confidently say that this letter and, and um, Honorable Denise might be in, in possession of this letter. It's stated clearly that she and the two um, who accompanied her on the photo will not serve Nepal South Africa in the foreseeable future. And I don't have the letter in front of me, I'm trying to remember. And, but they will all only do service for World Nepal. So this letter wasn't sent to Nepal South Africa, but a few months later, the letter came to Nepal South Africa's um, desk to the president. And then there were questions raised. So this one said this, that one said that, I said this, you said this. So the, 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 the line in the letter that says, we will not do any service for Nepal South Africa. Now, if you take our technical officials, our umpires, our coaches, they come through a pathway. From after you play, we give opportunities. We give, you, you, you know our busy schedule annually, not only for the spa proteas, for the districts, for the provinces, for each and every Nepal player in our, that, that is a member of Nepal South Africa. So, we give you opportunity to grow and we spend money to, to, to introduce you to the international world and we, give, we spend money and invest in everyone. So the investment to, into our technical officials and, and everyone involved in Nepal is huge because there's an there's a end goal. Like when you start to play Nepal, um, sometimes it's, your, it's your, your goal to become a provincial player, sometimes a pro tier player. The same with, with our technical officials. So when you don't, when you say you're not available for Netball South Africa's event, but you're available for World Netball, then the, the question starts to, to, to raise. So the CEO of World Netball phoned us and said, they have appointed her to be a, a UAP at one of the events, the 
Africa qualifying games, which we hosted. And then the president said, um, she sent them the letter to say that she mentioned that they will not work with Netball South Africa. So this is a South Africa event. So that was the reason. Then we called a meeting with World Netball. They called a meeting with us. Let me not um, um, mention it incorrectly. World Netball called a meeting with us. And the discussion was like this. If you, if you are on a, grow, on a path from Netball South Africa from year to, to from A to Z, and you decide I'm not going to work for Netball South Africa now. And you know events can't take place if you don't have technical officials. So you can't play a match. And you decide you don't have to work for Netball South Africa, but I'm, I'm available World Netball. When you call me, I will be there. I will be there for your World Netball's got a few um, competitions. One is the Fast Five, one is the Under 21 Championships, one is the World Cup. That's what they have. They are mother body. They're not active as us as countries. So if you're only available there, I think, <laughs> don't you think, most of the people would rather work there, not at the bottom. So, and I'm telling you, not only myself, one of my executive colleagues that knows Annie very well, and I know Annie very well, and I know her nature, called her, and we told her at the time, before she resigned, please don't do it. Think it over, all that. We did our best. Then we called her and Mari Lowe and explained to them the damage that they, this letter, because it's all among the, the umpires, and it was the umpires talking about it. So, and she asked me, what, what, do we, what are we supposed to do now? And I said, withdraw your letter. You were the author. Withdrew it and apologize. It may might have been an emotional decision at the moment. Mari Lowe came back and wrote a letter to say her understanding of the EPG demarcation, all of that, is clear to her. And she withdrew the fact that she assisted in this letter or was present in this discussion. And she apologizes that and, and accepted that it's the wrong way to go about. Madam, um, that's why she, she is back at, at Netball. Up till today, we have not received a, a um, apology or a withdrawal of that sentence from, from Annie. Thank you, thank you. Uh, the, 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 the last information, uh, uh, because you were responding on the question, I didn't want to cut you. Chairperson? Uh, uh, thank you, uh, TD. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Tabang will respond on the issues of uh, finance. On the question of how much the wooden sprung floors are costing, the floors have a, we've got two types of floors that we've ordered. In total, we've ordered 13 floors and uh, we have the match floor, uh, it's four match floors and the other ones which we, we are the ones that are gonna be used for training, which are nine. Uh, so the other ones have a 20 a warranty, the other ones a 50. So the one that we're for going to be used for the match floors, I mean, are costing 3.5 million each. Uh, and the ones that are going to be used for training, which are also still as good as the match floors, but it's a different, uh, 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 what? quality basically because the other one you've got the 25 years, the other one 50 years, it's 1, 1.75 million each every floor. So all in all, the 13 floors are costing us 34 million, including the import duties. On the question of the ticket sales, uh, 
Currently, we have uh, sold close to 20,000 tickets. And the tickets that are mostly being bought are the ones where you got the top four, four countries or top five events in South Africa. Those are the tickets that are in demand. If you look at so at our uh, opening match, which will be on session three, the tickets there are sold out uh, for where South Africa is playing also with Wales. And on the second phase, when we up, we 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 release the second phase, the closing ceremony, the last session uh, where the finals are going to be played, which is session twenty-three. Uh, the gold tickets are the ones that were quickly sold out. So those the opening and the final uh, tickets are the ones that have been mostly been sold. And also, if you look at the different uh, uh, games, the games where the top five are playing, those are the tickets that are in demand. But the other ones are slowly uh, 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 selling. Also, we don't have a, a timeline as to when are the tickets going to, we're expecting them to be all sold out. The other issue is that when you look at the, from day four, it's also going to be a round robin. So people don't know which team is gonna be playing where, on which group. I think that is also a, 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 a point that, a, or a, a contributing factor to why certain games are not a, a, a selling as fast as the opening and the closing, because it's still gonna be a round robin after day four, where we are also then going to uh, the sessions 13 to, not session 13, when we go to session uh, 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 Yeah, so the, after day three, when we go to day four, it will be session 13 to 14, it's where we start the round robin, which is the crossovers. So you go into group stages again, like group E, F, G. So we don't know which team is going to go into group F, which one is going to go into group G or E. So I think uh, throughout the games, the tickets will start moving once uh, the, the games also are, are played. And in terms of the uh, maintenance budget for the floors, we don't have a maintenance budget for the floors. The floors after we, 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 we the World Cup, we are taking them to the provinces. So the province have to provide a budget of a maintenance for those sprung floors because now they will be belonging to them. And in also in terms of the sponsors, the sponsors that have been concluded, the agreements are yet to be finalized. We are busy with World Netball, which uh, the delay has been through uh, from World Netball, even on the, which has also impacted us on the second tier sponsors to be finalized. So we are working hand in hand with World Netball. We are now having weekly meetings. We try and fast track these uh, uh, contracts to be concluded so that we can now start uh, uh, getting results from the sponsors in terms also of uh, uh, activations and marketing. The one for AXA and Red Bull, they are almost concluded. We just waiting for, for, the, for the contract. They have given us something that we've sent to both parties. Uh, AXA still has to come back to us with the offer that uh, World Netball has given them. Once they agree, then we will start the contract so that we can conclude that. The Red Bull one has been, they've agreed, they've came back to us, they're happy with what uh, 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 the rights and the exposure that uh, 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 World Netball is giving. So we are going to get into the next stage of contracting. So we're expecting to conclude this process uh, by the end of uh, uh, March or early April, because we really need uh, this money and the activations to, to start uh, happening, being rolled out. In terms of the, what was the other question? The countdown clocks, we will provide a breakdown of the one year ceremony or one year celebration that we did as requested. The clocks that we manufactured, we did, we did six clocks. Uh, the other one is at the CTICC, one is at the GSEC office, and the other one is at Sun City. The other three, we wanted to put them at the airports. 
We want to place one at the Cape Town International, one at OR Tambo, and the other one at the, at the Kinshaka. They haven't been put there because when we requested with AXA, AXA wanted us to pay 500,000 rent a month, which is the money that we don't have. So we have agreed with them. Once we conclude on this agreement with World Netball, that looks will they will give us the space as part also of the uh, VIK that we can put them there at their uh, and not pay for for them to be placed at these three airports. I'm trying to look at the other tickets. Um, the trophy tour we have been having. We sent a request actually since last year to provinces. We did a presentation at Edcom. And we've been requesting for these plans from provinces for the trophy tour and fan parks, which was not a, a coming. So hence, then we decided let's do a meeting with provinces so that we can uh, get these plans. So I know uh, I spoke to the to the to the to the to the to, to Western Cape yesterday, and we informed that there's a problem now. They almost the plans are almost ready but they are just in negotiation with Eastern Cape because they've changed the venue where they were gonna have to uh, receive the trophy for, from, in, from the Eastern Cape. So those uh, plans they have indicated that we'll get them. Uh, I also had a discussion with Northern Cape yesterday and Northern Cape indicated that they, uh, they have the roots. They are just going to be presenting it to the MEC this morning and the after then they will be able to share it with us. In terms of the vacancy of the, of the CFO, we were looking at the second from from the province and from other stakeholders. Hence, we haven't advertised that position because we're also trying to, 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 to contain our cost and also looking at where we are. So we should finalize that in about uh, from, from the 1st of March. In terms of the volunteers, uh, the process closed on the 15th of February. At this stage now, we are finalizing the screening process and uh, also looking at where these uh, volunteers want, which areas do they want to be placed at. So the different heads of units are looking at those. Uh, there after the next process from next week, what we'll be doing will then be doing the the screening and then sending them also for vetting. Thereafter, after they've been vetted, we'll then do the interviews. So we'll send them through to SSA for vetting because uh, they have indicated that each and every volunteer that we appoint, they will want to vet them, including the service providers that we are appointing, SSA vet them. Therefore, we will engage it in terms of also the support from the African countries as I read in the presentation, but they've also offered that they will also assist us with marketing uh, through their uh, other missions, abroad missions, uh, so that uh, uh, they can assist us with the marketing of the tickets that are not selling and also to, uh, for exposure as well. So that's how they are contributing to assist us. I think Tabang, then you can answer the, the, the other questions. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, uh, thank you, Priscilla Tabang, or oh, Chairperson, uh, direct oh. your colleagues. Yeah, yes, can, can Tabang respond to the uh, AFs, the shortfall? And I think there was also a question around we had a, a surplus, but now it says deficit. So if you can just explain that and also the whole issue around the risk, uh, on uh, some of the risk on, on the delivery of the event. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will start uh, with the, uh, the, the questions, which I think they, were, they, they came from another member Van Dijk uh, on the issue of the deficit. Uh, this issue uh, has also been raised in the board, I think. Uh, and it is now in the, 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 the technical IMC has found a, a, a guidance where they said uh, we must sit with 
the city uh, or all stakeholders who are who to deal with the issue of the deficit. In the evolution of the budget, Chairperson, there was a time where in the top part of the budget, the, the revenue streams, we had put the VIK or value in kind that we anticipate from different sources. For instance, um, if, if a, the provincial department will give us so many number of employees to come and assist in the delivery of the event, they would say, these employees are more likely to cost them 10 million and that would be included on the top part. On, on evaluation of the budget as we go through, the question again was that, how realistic is this amount uh, and how does it impact on other things? So at some point when these amounts of value in kind were removed, they resulted in a deficit, just on the numbers, a deficit of, uh, I think it was 30 million at that point. And this deficit was the, the questions which were raised was that how do you then deal with the deficit because the budget is in a deficit? And we had to go back and relook at the figures, do a process of number crunching and make sure that uh, we do either two ways. We have the ability to raise the revenue on top or we need to cut on the Fed that is below. Now, last week we attended the technical IMC and, and the same matter was raised. And the IMC then you know, guided that we should sit on Monday to deal specifically with the deficit because now the deficit is a number crunching exercise which we have managed to deal with as you would see now in the projected budget. We don't necessarily have a deficit, but the main risk now on the budget is the shortfall to say, if the projections that you have made on ticket and sale and you are anticipating to receive 65 million of tickets sold, what happens if you don't reach the 65 million? Because that 65 million is also expected to pay off some expenditure, which is below. And how is this shortfall affecting your ability to deliver the event. And, and this is the other question I was put in this way to say, if we result in a loss, who guarantees, uh, is it like the responsibility of government? Is it the responsibility of NSA? Is it the responsibility of the LOC? Uh, and you'll find that in the three documents that have been signed is the head of terms, and then you have the hosting agreement. The hosting agreement is the World Net Ball is saying it will be the responsibility of uh, LOC along with NSA. But what we are doing now, the process that we are doing that we set on Monday and we're sitting again today uh, before the IMC is that we we, we need, we, the reason why we are going deeper into each and every line to say on sponsorship, we are projecting 28 million. What is the constraints around the negotiations? Uh, World Netball has its own rules about which rights they afford you. The sponsorship are negotiating to say, for me to give you six million, I need one, two, three. And this is where, uh, until we finalize some of the things, we are able then to give a guarantee. But over and above that, we looked at specific line items in the, how much will it cost realistically to deliver on the opening ceremony. The opening ceremony is one uh, uh, hour, but in the opening ceremony, can you, uh, talk to the department to get entertainment from their own inventory or how they negotiate with the artist and 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 so that you you balance the amount of money that you need to spend on each and every line item where we can be able to negotiate if the security around the event is closer to four million including the transport management plan can you talk to the department of transport can you talk to the city and say how we the leverage around the issue of the transport management plan and where can we save and be able to do those things. The same applies to health, the same applies to accreditation and, and all these things. So this is where we are in, in responding to the issue of deficit vis-a-vis -vis the shortfall. I think what was more difficult was the, the shortfall as it relates to the guarantee to say, money sometimes is just production 
are projections that don't reflect the money that is contained that is needed because we are at the last implementation point where most of the money has to be used. There was a question which was raised by Mr. Mflongo to say, of the 90 million that has been received, where are we? We have received almost 60 million of that money. The 30 million, we still, it was only going to be received after the financial statement. But the first 30 million, it's, it's most likely up to the end of the 31st of March, the money that would have already been spent. The second 30 million is what we are spending now. But, but because we are implementing now a bigger amount, how much is the venue? We are negotiating with the venue because the venue is also connected to the city to say, the city, can you negotiate with us for the venue? So this is where we are, uh, Chairperson, dealing with the issue of how much is the actual guarantee? How much is the actual cost uh, of the, the surplus, which at the beginning in 2018, we said this is a guaranteed surplus and this is how much we have paid on it. This is still outstanding. How much of that money has changed because of exchange rate and, and, and all those things we are trying to combine them together and see whether are we able to cut the Fed at the bottom or are we able to increase you know, the revenue at the top? So, to, and it will, it will put us at a position where we are now able to say all the contracts are signed. This is the actual cash that you are going to get from this person. This is the actual uh, VIK that we are going to get from that person. This is the actual budget relieving item that this sponsor is going to do or this department is going to do. I think that was why that question was asked, as to provide the guarantee. Uh, I'm not sure, Chairperson, I think uh, that, 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 that answers both uh, the questions about uh, the deficit and the issue of how far are we. We will provide, I think, a presentation specifically on financials to do the required breakdown as to uh, what is this breakdown and that breakdown and any other report that may be necessary to uh, supplement uh, the specific questions that want uh, what is the cost of this item of accommodation and flight. Uh, is it, you know, maybe we, need, we will ask within a period up to which point, is it for every meeting that we go to the IMC? If two or three people go there, do we include it and just mentioning it, saying this is a specific one? And, and so that we do a report that answers that specific question about finances relating to uh, accommodation. Uh, Chairperson, uh, thank you. I think I have dealt with those specific two items on, on finances. Hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chair. Can I just then do the last uh, questions that I see that have not been addressed uh, through yeah. Madam Chair. Uh, <clears throat> the, 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 the issue around the number of LOC members present here, um, in, in relation to that, we, uh, as board members, uh, we are seven, uh, and currently in the meeting that we are attending now, it's only uh, four of us that are here. Uh, um, I, must, I must apologize, uh, Chair, that I did not convey an apology as well from the deputy uh, chairperson uh, who's, who has not joined us. So we are seven as a board. Um, and we, as I said earlier on that we meet um, fortnightly to, to look at uh, progress and how we, we assist uh, the tournament director and, and, and her office on issues that they need to speedily look at based on the target set and the milestone. Uh, but while I'm talking about this, I think it would be important for me to also indicate that uh, with the intervention of the Honorable Minister, as it was indicated in the last uh, uh, meeting, uh, th there's a huge progress in terms of um, uh, how we're navigating uh, issues of providing the oversight uh, and guidance to, to the tournament director and their team. Uh, our fortnight meetings are helping on prioritizing what is key that needs to be done. And I must also confirm that we're even having some special board meetings so that we can attend to various items that are urgent that we need to look at. So there's, there is progress. And I think looking at, the, at what has been presented today, uh, as much as there were stones thrown to each other, I think uh, to a certain extent, we've taken those stones to build a, 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 a stronger a team in terms of assisting uh, the, the, the LOC uh, on, on its functions. Um, <clears throat> So that, that's the one on the on the issue of the LOC. And then the next one was about appointment of Kate. Uh, um, 
Katie is a is a is a, a event consultant from World Netball. Uh, in accordance to the uh, host agreement that we signed, uh, even when we were given the and when when we were uh, announced as the host uh, of this event, one of the oblig obligation in the host agreement and the heads of terms was that uh, uh, they are going to we have to pay for a events consultant that is going to help us uh, around the uh, deliver of the World Cup. And one of the reasons from World Netball was that it's for the first time as a country or as a continent that we're hosting such an event. So we'll need a person with expertise to do that. We we we, we have acknowledged the fact that legally uh, we do not have a choice, but as a board, we have to really accept what uh, we've signed for in terms of the heads of terms. Uh, however, what the challenge that we had around the issue of the appointment of Kate was uh, finance um, and some of the things that uh, World Network put forward to us. But as a board, we have resolved that, look, uh, we do not have choice, uh, but also for us to make sure that we make World Netball as custodian to be comfortable uh, on the issue of the hosting of this event, we have to really uh, uh, continue and accepting that we need that uh, event consultant. So we have agreed and we, we've we presented to them the challenges of um, why we can't meet uh, what they've put forward in terms of the cost, but also there was the issue of um, a tax uh, from the side that if you come and work in South, in South Africa, what are the obligations and all those kind of things. So we have provided them with our counter offer. Uh, we're just waiting to finalize that uh, after they look at what we've put forward to them. But the issue of Kate, I can con I can confirm that uh, there is progress uh, between us and World Netball. We're just waiting for them to come back to us on that one. Uh, on the issue of the recordings of the board meetings, um, um, Chair, I think I think on that one I'll have to be uh, guided uh, um, uh, by the board, but no, well the board and our legal person in terms of making them available. I mean I don't think there's anything, but may I be allowed that I can be able to indicate this to the board and then so that it can be able to finish with the recordings. Um, and then on the issue of the, I think the aspect about interventions, I've spoken to it that look uh, with with support from the department really. Uh, we are moving. Yes, we we can confirm that we still have uh, challenges on the issue that we just spoke about on the finances, uh, the issue around uh, uh, amplifying more on mobilization and marketing. And, you know, with the appointment of the head of marketing, we are very hopeful that we're going to really now start to drive the whole issue around visibility um, uh, with our stakeholders. Mm -hmm. But I must also confirm to you, uh, honorable chair and honorable members, that with the sponsors or the stakeholders that we have. Uh, from their side, they are also doing their best to really market uh, this event. And I think we are seeing it uh, on, on media and, 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 and social media as has been indicated by some of the honorable members. So there is really progress. We just need to really, uh, um, uh, you know, after even the cricket, uh, when it ends this week, then also we're going to be able to have that kind of a space for us to be able to to zoom in uh, seriously in terms of that. I mean, one of the things that we've even said in the board meeting is that the city as the host um, uh, in three months before the event, they need to dress up that city to say a uh, Netball World Cup is coming to South Africa. So, so there is progress, Chair, uh, from our side um, and we'll continue really providing any updates that is needed uh, from our side uh, so that we are aware in terms of how we're progressing on state of readiness on the event. I, I'm, I hope, uh, okay, the last one, Chair, that you spoke about was the merchandising aspect in terms of um, accessibility on the on the uh, Netball Friday t-shirts. Uh, we recently as well uh, approved the issue of merchandising, the company that is going to help us uh, in, in starting on issues of various things that we've decided on merchandising. And we're hoping that once that is then it's done, I think then, the public will have access to be able to buy that and then they can help us in terms of public publicizing the event before uh, July. I think on that note, Chair, I'm hopeful that uh, we would have covered uh, most of the questions that have been put forward to us. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Thank you for the answers. The unfortunate thing, I'm seeing the hands whilst we were still on the platform I was not yet called the follow-up 
but already there are two hands uh, which is up. I was going to ask that honorable members, uh, but since the, the team is responding, I'm seeing the hands are up. Now let me give it to you, uh, DDG. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, and thank you to the honorable members for all of the questions. Um, Chairperson, I'm going to respond specifically to questions that perhaps um, are within the ambit of the department and where we work with the LOC and there's um, uh, dependencies. I will also respond to those. Uh, first and foremost, Chairperson, let me apologize if there's invitations from our own projects like the Big Walk, National Recreation Day, the youth camps, et cetera, that have not gone out to you. We will assure you, I assure you that those will be corrected, uh, Chairperson, and those invitations would go out. I think for us, the protocol has always been, we would send it through to the office of the Chairperson, we do know now and then there have been some di diversions and different committees that sit to manage the events and manage the invitations do it differently. So we do apologize for that. So we will make sure that those invitations go out to the events. We also note Chairperson, um, the chairperson's comments about making sure that we include other members of parliament within their constituencies where many of our projects take place that we provide the information to uh, through the chairperson or through the, the committee so that it can be then distributed to other members of parliament uh, so that they know what's happening within their constituency and where there are events happening and where there they are handovers or hand, uh, handover of our sports facilities that they are also invited to that. So we do apologize for that, Chairperson, and we'll correct that. Um, then Chairperson, on the issue of um, the netball courts, <coughs> excuse me, the multi-purpose sports court, and the question raised by Honorable Mushlongo about why the sports trust, and uh, why can't we procure these courts through our own? Uh, let me quickly indicate, Chairperson, that the sports trust was a, it's an, it's a non-profit, non-governmental uh, non organization, excuse me, non-profit organization. And as way of background, chairperson, um, it was the late, uh, the minister, the first minister of sport in democratic South Africa, the late Minister Shweti, who was directed by the, the former late president, uh, Tata Madiba, to establish an NGO consisting of public and private sector to assist with fast checking, you know, sports facilities, uh, provisions, provision of equipment attire, mainly to most of the disadvantaged communities. And as you see, uh, Chairperson, um, we've had this partnership where the Sports Trust is our agency that delivers on the um, the infrastructure, the multi-purpose sports courts. Now, if you look at these sports courts, it started the whole project eventually, you know, the whole project of the multi-purpose sports court started in 2010. But before that, when they were established, they used to provide sports equipment attire. But the sports facilities, the multi-purpose sports court started in 2010. And to date, they've built 117 sports courts, including this last list that we have of the legacy projects in every province. So we can provide a breakdown of all the courts in which provinces they were built, et cetera, so that you can see that, you know, it was much easier, they were great. There was a faster turnaround time when the sports trust as an agency could deliver these projects. Uh, Chairperson, if you look at the maintenance of the projects as um, required, who maintains these courts? The sports courts have a lifespan of 20 years. They have a special surface um, that we have to procure. It comes from overseas. We cannot procure it anywhere in South Africa. It has a lifespan of 20 years. And every five years, the lines needs, need to be repainted because the sports courts caters for five codes of sport. 
So we, we actually draw the lines in different colors on the courts uh, so that there are five codes of sports, uh, codes of sport can, that can play on those facilities. So when the sports courts are allocated to the school chairperson, there's an agreement that we signed with the schools to say that as the owners of the sports courts, number one, they will take care of the maintenance. So every five years, they will take, they will sweep it all the time. It needs sweeping on a daily basis and it needs the courts, the, the lines to be painted every five years. So that's the one condition that the school has to comply with. The other condition, Chairperson, is that they must make available the facilities to the communities that they service. So in the community where, they, where the sports court is built, the communities must be allowed, the clubs must be allowed access to that facility. Then the neighboring schools in that vicinity, and some of these schools are very strategically placed because if there's no facility in the community or there's no facility in other schools, you have this facility built in one school, it services the community, it services all the other schools there. So those are the conditions that the school has to adhere to if they want this. And then the sports starts managing, uh, monitors them on a regular basis and assists where they can as well. And we as a department, we would provide equipment and attire when we do the handover. So that's as far as the sports sports are concerned, uh, Madam Chair. Um, when we look at the uh, the other issue around uh, the sports trust that was raised raised by Honourable Adams, you know what was the issue with the supplier, um, Madam Chair? The challenge with the supplier that the supplier was taking too long. The supplier would actually procure it from the manufacturer, and by the time the supplier gets it, it takes a very long time. And hence this project now, where we were hoping it would be delivered much quicker, uh, it has now dragged on for a bit right till the end of financial year. So now the new supplier is actually a subsidiary of the manufacturer. Bank manufacturer. And in this, uh, um, in this way, they are, they've got more teams who will now start to install and there'll be a faster delivery and turnaround time with those facilities. And then uh, Chairperson, the response to questions from Honorable Dennis, uh, in terms of the minister's comments about, you know, the appointment of a deputy chair. Yes, indeed. I think uh, I heard the, the chairperson saying that the deputy chairperson has now joined the meeting. Uh, he has been appointed. He is Mr. Max Fuzani. And yes, he's the deputy chair. He's a seasoned administrator. He has been a former advisor to the minister of sport and uh, he is a um, consultant and he has experience of sitting on boards and he's presently also sits on other boards. So he has been appointed. Um, I'm trying to think of the exact date, but he is in here and I'm hoping at some point he can show his face so the colleagues are aware of who he is. And then Madam Chair, I think Chairperson has also spoken about the mobilization strategy, the Netball Friday. Uh, let me indicate, Chairperson, you know, we all got behind the Netball Friday initiative, which was led by Netball South Africa. We bought the shirts, which is the sole property of Netball South Africa as well. But Chairperson has indicated that now that a merchandising and licensing agent has been appointed, we will be able then now through, they would manage all the intellectual property. We all will be able to buy shirts or make shirts for mass distribution. So we are in the process of, uh, we've also already started to engage with the commercial agent to see how we can get, um, you know, t-shirts and, um, and other paraphernalia in, in large quantities so that we can start with the mobilization. Madam Chair, the other issue around mobilization, and we've been uh, advised by the experts in marketing and uh, mobilization, is that the fact that if you look now, Madam Chair, there are so many events taking place. There's the Netball World Cup. Uh, there's a Netball, uh, sorry, the Cricket T20. The cricket had an under 19 event. There was a SA20 cricket. There was a Hockey World Cup. So there were so many events happening now and everyone was fighting for public space and media and, and, and to get uh, people coming to their events that any efforts by the Netball World Cup 2023 would be diluted if we try and mobilize now. 
So the, the advice was that we should just wait a bit and start the mobilization at least three months beforehand. So we are targeting, we are working with that. We've noted that because you can see already, Madam Chair, in the space we are, there's a lot that's going on with cricket, especially cricket now because they've had so many events that have taken place. So, um, so, so, so that was the, the strategy, Madam Chair, to say is we will start very soon but there is work in progress towards that. And I think the board is also working and finalizing the marketing plan around that. And as uh, Chairperson has said, there's a, a marketing uh, a manager who's been appointed. So that has been the strategy around that. So um, with regard to the uh, uh, 2010 FIFA World Cup uh, time, uh, Chairperson, you are correct. There was more money, you know, there was, dedicated allocations from Treasury to the National Department of Sport at, uh, at that time, Sport and Recreation. The provincial departments had dedicated funding for legacy, for mobilization, for infrastructure development, uh, you know, so, and, and hence you could see there was a lot of t-shirts that were going around. Even the National Department had a dedicated unit with the, with the specialized, with the dedicated DG for the 2010 uh, World Cup in its, it was like a department within a department. So there was a great deal of uh, resources and there was also the partners and there were sponsors who came on board. So the marketing was very aggressive at that time. Um, unfortunately with the Netball World Cup, there's no not so many sponsors. There are not so many, uh, um, uh, there's not resources as we had at the 2010 FIFA World Cup. So yes, we will, there is a great deal we're trying to do in mobilizing as a department as well as with the LOC as well. But obviously resources are in short supply, but we're trying our best and we believe it will start picking up now after all of these other events uh, um, close um, maybe by the end of this month. Uh, Chairperson, my last point is, you know, I think let's, we must be mindful, you know, I know that all of the time there's a lot of criticism about some of the things that the board is doing, and as a department we're working very closely with them to guide them, the ministers constantly are meeting with the board, with the uh, Chairperson, the IMC, uh, just to see how best we can assist in every way. It is the first time this World Cup is coming to South Africa and Africa. So, Chairperson, I would plead with everyone just to help us, help us hold hands with us, every one of us. I know that you're the oversight committee, but it can be very deflating at times when we constantly get criticism because we try our best as a department. And I mean, we are really excited because I mean, very shortly, uh, Chairperson, you will see we'll be finalizing the Women in Sport Policy. Uh, it's at an advanced stage with Cabinet at the moment. So we really, really plead with everyone to support us. You know, we cannot fail or we cannot be set up to fail as women when we want to really, really make sure that all those young girls that are in the rural areas get this chance to be part of the sports landscape. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, TG. Uh, TTG. Uh, I'm not sure whether is there any other uh, official from your side who wanted to say something. Uh, if it's not, uh, I do. I do thank all of you, and I've seen now that uh, we still have a follow-up hands. It's Honourable Mklongo and Honourable Veronica. Uh, <clears throat> honorable members, uh, I'm not going to say you must not do so, uh, but according to your, your adopted program, uh, <clears throat> by this time, which is past 12, uh, by 12, we're supposed to close the, the meeting, but because this is a very interesting uh, information, it, uh, it needs to take a other format because of the questions and the depth answers of the questions. Uh, we're still having about two items which we need to deal with them. 
So let me give the honorable members to do follow up questions. I thank you. Honorable <coughs> Mstongo. Where is Joman? Where is Babum Song? Honorable Veronica. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I think some of my questions has not been answered um, on the DGs and the countdown clock uh, launch, but I can put that in writing. Um, but I do want to get clarity um, from Mr. Lagware. I have it on good authority that Mrs. Mari Lowe for the Marwa did not write a letter to apologize. So I want you to commit to send the letter to the committee before end of business day five uh, this afternoon. And then I also want to urge you to provide this committee with a written uh, communication between you, um, uh, Nicole Essay, and Ms. Kloppers. Um, if the procedure was followed in the and uh, this action step taken against her um there should not be a problem to uh, provide the committee with it um it's it is a very harsh step to take someone's accreditation away so if the procedure was followed and she had a fair opportunity to present her case we need as the committee i would re request that we receive that communication to put this matter behind us because there's a lot of Apparently, a lot of victimization going on in at Nepal um, SA. Um, and I would like the uh, chairperson to support us so that we can get, this is also in the media, this whole case of this person who lost her accreditation, but there was no communication in writing towards her. She lost, lost her accreditation at World Nepal. And uh, I heard what the explanation was, but we need to see if uh, processes were followed, if she did have the opportunity to present herself and um, in all fairness, um, I don't think it should be a problem to provide the committee with that, that info. Um, as um, uh, uh, as I say, there should have been procedures. So it should be in um, writing and it should be on record. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Apology, I'm a lawyer lawyer. Lord. 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 I apologize, Chair. But Chair, I wanted to, to raise, we support the netball. I'm not sure if I was audible. We support women's development, Chair. And for information, DDG, when we uh, ask questions, it doesn't mean that we don't support you. But DDG, I want to go to see for myself for this wooden floor of that cost 3.5 million rent. I must be convinced that money is used accordingly. This is taxpayers' money. Imagine one wooden floor for plus minus uh, 12 meters square of, of a, a court, or how many square of a court. Now, I must question that, and I must get an answer that it's shocking to see that each floor costs plus minus, the other one is cost 1.7 million, another one is costing plus minus 3.5 million. Who are the suppliers? Can you have the name of those suppliers? Why didn't we ask a local to go abroad and see the, the actual uh, floor that they need and the specification? And we do it in South Africa with the same specification that are done abroad or international specification. It's shocking to see that wooden floor will cost this much for just a, 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 a netball a, a play. We need the supplier's name. Who are they, even the international? And in future, we must develop our own suppliers. They must go abroad and see how does it how, how does it look and the specification and we do it at local uh, cost. And Chair, I propose that we must see that floor. Babu Zondi was asking what kind of a floor. I know that floor, but I was not sure the floor that will cost plus minus 3.5 million rent, which is shocking. And the maintenance part, which it needs maintenance of a painting after five years. Uh, the school one, I'm not talking about the international one. I wonder how is the international one? Because the school one cost 1.7, the international one cost uh, 3.5 million, which is, you know, can we have an agreement with the provinces that they'll take care of this 3.5 million wooden floor after the, 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 the games and after the World Cup? So I'm happy we support the World Cup and we support the women's development. Tonight we'll be going to Cricket T20 will be supporting them on their semis and will criticize them what we're supposed to criticize because they were not running according to my view. They're too slow to run and it's a good critique. They must make sure that we win this game tonight here in England. Thank you very much.
honorable members, uh, uh, it was a very fruitful meeting uh, that we were having today. Uh, always uh, we do this because uh, to get uh, information is empowering us being a public representatives. And we are saying keep up the good work that we are doing. And as this committee, uh, as we are seeing that uh, we don't miss Fridays uh, of putting our t-shirts, which were given by your good selves. So make no mistake, uh, we do support. And it was this committee who took a decision that let's call LOC then when we were seeing that there's nothing is happening. As, as uh, I'm, I'm about to close uh, this part, uh, we've confirmed that we are seeing now the movements that are getting there. But as we are presenting, there are things that we must ask uh, in order that we must not misrepresent the department and ULOC. So far, so good. And in reality, we are all not knowing the wooden, uh, what, wooden what flaws. Uh, when one time doing him oversight will be taken and, and look at it. But in reality, uh, I'm, 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 I'm in, in another meeting on another day, uh, no wonder how much can be a maintenance of a province uh, on the uh, wooden floor who, who uh, very uh, costly in nature, but as, as we're getting a day to close the door, as we're uh, having these meetings every now and then, we'll get those, those things which we, we are not yet aware. Hey, you know, honorable members, uh, to have uh, the meetings at home, now I must, as if I'm having chickens here, I does say, my apology, because my mark now is, is on and there's a hell of noise. Uh, let me take this opportunity to thank every, every South African who is- Chairperson, on a point of privilege, I've asked a follow-up question, Chair. I think there must be answered. I apologize, I respect you, but I've asked follow-up question and they need responses. Thank you very much. Oh, I was thinking that this, oh, I'm um, honorable person. When I was uh, listening about this 1.7 and whatever, I was thinking that you need uh, uh, them. Uh, okay, uh, before I, I was, uh, I was now in the uh, uh, process of closing. A uh, chairperson of the LOC, DTG, any one of you, can you, can you respond? Because with the Honorable Van Dijk, he wanted something written, you did here. So with Honorable Mflong, I was thinking that he is still continuing uh, contributing and when you are saying that, can't we have our own suppliers in order that uh, the, the local uh, business people, they must have this uh, capacity and skill rather than to take outside. I was thinking that it's just for noting, but let me not do that. Uh, DJ and uh, Patience Jefferson. Yes, yes, th th thank you very much, um, uh, Chair. I'm seeing the Chair, Chair. Hello. Thank you, Chair. I just want to pursue Honorable Mshongo that mustn't respond. As a committee, maybe ourselves will sit and decide because we are here in Cape Town. I believe there is one wooden court in Cape Town so that we go and see it 
so that maybe they can explain. So we go there physically, so then the explanation, the explanation will be done there when we're doing the oversight. That I, I just request to pursue Honorable Michel on that one. Thank you, Chair. Your colleague is persuading you. Uh... Uh, yeah. Chair, I don't have a problem for, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I don't need, who are the suppliers, international suppliers? Can we have the names of the international suppliers that cost 3.5 million rand? I need the names of the suppliers. Yes, we'll do our oversight. We'll go to Cape Town and see it, but we must go and see the 3.5 one. And then the, who are the suppliers? They must tell us. Thank you. Uh, if you have them uh, in your uh, fingertips, tell us. If not, forward the information. No, th th thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I'll just check uh, um, TD or Blanche if you might have, as, as the Chair has asked, that if you've got it on the tip of your fingers, whether you yeah. can remember the information. Uh, certainly. I think, um, I think we can also share. Um, um, footage of, of our floors when we play internationals and local and telecom league and invite people when it's been built because it's portable floors. The size of a wooden sprung floor is 36 by 22 and obviously need that space to be built. It's portable floors. Um, we don't have our own venue. It would be wonderful if we can install a permanent floor, which will be um, at the end um, um, very um, cost effective, but we need to transport the floor every time, bolt it, break it down, and um, set it up, break it down, and store it again. Um, and I'm just reminding you, yes, we have um, we have the, the um, uh, supplier, um, which we used many years ago and, and eventually <laughs> different supplies become cost effective. But so it's all about the rank value as well. That sounds uh, very expensive, but certainly all of that is very um, transparent in our um, quote system and um, finances you, we can share. Blanche, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm running short of time. Thank you for that explanation. And, and I'm suspecting that uh, I'm not supposed to do what I'm doing to you because we are responding to our own questions whilst uh, we are no longer having time. Thank you for that. Anything that uh, you can forward uh, for the committee through the, the office of Uche person uh, is it, going to uh, assist. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we are running uh, uh, behind our times. I'm very sorry. Uh, DTG, brief to the point. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Chairperson, just to indicate, you know, it, it may sound very expensive, but the lifespan is long, and also there are very specific things for safety measures that we have to take into consideration. So hence, we have to pay a lot. The fact that, yes, it comes from overseas may be adding to the cost as well. But I think safety is a main consideration and the fact that it meets international standards. And any sports facility, if you look at sports facilities generally, there's a lot that goes into it and hence the cost. And then, uh, Chairperson, just to indicate, when we were looking at this, I think one of the board members did due diligence. He had gone through to DTIC, to look at all of their list of things that they have that we can procure locally. And the netball sports, those sports courts were not on that list, not on the DTIC list for procurement. So we had no option but to go this route of getting it overseas. But I think, Madam Chair, we see an opportunity here, like we see in many of the other sports equipment, like your gym equipment, et cetera, that comes from overseas, you know, for local manufacture in that field. And it's something we need then to explore with DTIC and with the Department of Small Business so that we can grow the local economy. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you for those answers. Um, uh, the information is power. Uh, you know, when you are saying that even the gym equipments, there are those that you can't get uh, local in South Africa, but uh, we are taking uh, the point uh, 
uh, especially this DTIC question. Um, maybe next time we'll, we'll be uh, getting to uh, more details. Thank you so much, uh, Chairperson, uh, with the DT and Ms. Teblanche. Uh, um, in those words, we were with you. We are belonging in this Mzansi. And uh, what, if you're having problems, those problems are not your problems. Uh, immediately that you are seeing that there are problems. That's why you are a committee. We discussed saying that I, let's call them why this thing is not happening. And now uh, we are seeing that uh, within 100 days, uh, something is happening and, and we'll continue any time uh, that we feel as members that we want to hear something we'll call. Uh, you must not think that we are saying we don't do anything. Uh, because we want to own uh, this work which we are doing. You are doing well. And, and uh, if we can remember last time, uh, your chairperson was just transparent, telling us about the problems. So immediately that problems are identified, there we are today. When we're doing our oversight saying, come, 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 we don't see, we don't feel. Now we do feel, but we're still going to iron out with you uh, everything. In those words, uh, thank you so much. I'm releasing you, uh, the, the LOC and our department. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. And thank you to the Honorable thank Members. You, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, DG. And the, thank the, you, the, Chair. Thank you, thank, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you, madam. Goodbye. Thank you very much. To be in a meeting on Fridays, but the way that you are concentrated even uh, today, uh, can we fly to yes? Honorable members, uh, I'm suspecting today we must uh, look at it and and uh, adopt our our program. Uh, on the 21st, uh, we know that uh, that meeting of the 21st is coming on on Tuesday. We didn't get a venue. The venues are fully booked. But to you, honourable members, today I had to go to the office uh, here at Laboria Park. Seemingly, there is a, 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 a big tree even before load shedding that I was having this problem. So I've discovered that if I can go to that uh, uh, office of uh, people who are having office here in, in, in the park, I didn't have any problem. I was sitting and then until 10 o'clock, I, I came back. Thank you so much, honorable members. And, and which means next today we are here we we are here today we've done and then let's go up and then it 28 uh, which me which is tuesday uh, we are we are dealing with a very important uh, agenda item which uh, because of uh, the, the way that we arrange the meeting. Uh, honorable members, we agreed uh, with the, the Honorable Mshongo, the, 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 the owner of the petition, but it was not only himself and the Honorable Dennis. Uh, we did get a, an opportunity when we were in the cricket that we do feel that uh, were very disorganized, but now we want that on, on Tuesday at nine o'clock, uh, we'll, we'll be having our own meeting. They will all get in and then we'll ask that they, they must be excused. And then Honorable Michonne is going to take us through and we have agreed upon and uh, I'm suspecting every now and then we can 
uh, be doing things like uh, leaders, because everyone here is a leader. So we have solved that amicable, uh, that let's have our own session and then getting to honorable members. I've asked the, 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 the office that must invite everyone in order that uh, if a uh, department is, is saying NAC, if for NAC is saying, you know, it's department, if for AG is saying the department is not yet giving ABC, so uh, they are going to be present. Uh, so uh, Friday briefing by the market theater, uh, annual report uh, to end seventh, Briefing by Sunduzi Museum, the tenth briefing by Karate South Africa. Uh, after Karate South Africa, a uh, briefing by Chess South Africa, March uh, 17, a brief, briefing by Department of Sports, Arts and Culture, Auditor General of South Africa, and Public Protector on the M implementation of the public protest remedial action. I must reflect on this honorable members in order that uh, in future we must agree on the on the on the approach. Uh, on that day of, of or on the meeting, I responded to Honorable Marlingos that we have responded to uh, Mr. Nyatela. And why did I say that? I was saying that because I was aware and all of us were aware that on the program that 17 of, Ma of March, we are going to have this meeting. Uh, but after we have finished this, I would love to tell that uh, uh, after that meeting, following day, uh, Mr. Nyatela confronted the administrator of our secretariat saying that I've lied that uh, we, I responded. My response, honorable members, it was based on that we, we did look at outstanding issues. The first issue, it was this issue of last Tuesday, which we were going to finalize of a petition. And then the second issue, it was this issue of uh, Mr. Nyatela. And we've said it must be scheduled in, in, in this first term program. So I responded because it's a response when somebody is saying somebody presented lies. And I'm thinking that the best solution is that we must call these people uh, that uh, they must come and tell us. And in turn, as the committee, will respond uh, giving the, the response of what is going to happen on Friday 17. But he, he even just said, uh, I lied and after I've lied and it's because now I do benefit. I don't know what I'm benefiting, but it's, I, I'm not going to bore, bore you about that because uh, the public uh, people, they've got a right to report, but we've got processes that we must process that information in order that in turn, uh, we must say to that person, here we are, these people, they, they did, um, uh, uh, honorable members, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm suspecting those who are going to, uh, what do you call, those who are going to e, e, e cricket, now I'm disturbed by people who want to talk to me about the shuttle of today, but uh, they've, they've just vanished, they were ringing. So far, my phone and the, the, the iPad are, are linked. Um, uh, honorable members, let me leave them. So uh, the approach, honorable member, honorable Shongo, please uh, lower your, your hand. I'm still, I'm still presenting. Uh, the approach that I'm thinking, honorable members, is that this is uh, the good approach 
of the 17th. The, the problem now uh, that Mr. Nyatela, uh, he is disrespecting our secretary. He was very harsh and rude to our secretary. And I've said to secretary must write it down to me officially because we cannot, we need to protect our staff secretaries. Uh, uh, now, uh, when we end this point, uh, we, 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 you must reflect whether we are wrong that we are not inviting because he's saying that he need to be invited. He, he, it was himself. The approach that we discuss as, as the management is that we had him and let's call these people uh, that they must come uh, and they must tell us about the remedial. So we do have a report of a public protector, but we wanted that they must come in a form of a committee. So honorable members, let's engage on point, uh, um, on, on, on the 17th of March, uh, let's, let's pack it. Uh, I, I, I wanted to raise in order that we must know that what must we put flesh or not to put flesh for the, that Friday meeting. And then on the 24th, March is Saskok, uh, and then 26 to 31st March, it's our oversight to Northern Cape. I'm suspecting that this visit, uh, uh, we cannot miss it, uh, honorable members, it's overdue. Uh, I'm, I'm putting the proposal of our program, honorable Mishongo. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. No, I'm still here. Apologies. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Chair, I, I support, but I have um, amendments for the program yet. I would propose, Chair, Eternal South Africa ne, ne chairs. I don't see agency on those issues uh, because obviously my view if we are going to utilize Amalanga, let's utilize them for issues of agency. And there's a proposal from Honorable Denis Oifagile, and I think we must consider that. It was sent to Uchabu for the one day of the, of, 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 of the two that we must have uh, that discussion. And I concur with you what we've agreed that 10 o'clock and 9 o'clock will meet in committee. I'll just brief the committee and then we'll have the department, all of them, even the N NPO, the CEO, everybody must be there and then we'll take it from them. But I think let's not treat it differently like than others. How can we say she must not, he must not be invited? Yes, he came with allegation, email or messages or uchabu. But we must call him and he must come and substantiate what he, Marat, you are involved. How are you involved? And there's a process which is like, he must maybe write a letter to the speaker as he did with his. Now we cannot punish an individual because he wrote the letter. We didn't punish NAC. They misled that I, I was abusing the chair when I asked a question, uh, the, the, the chair of the NAC. Now that's, if someone feels they are not offended by the letter, he must respond and we're not going to say, because you wrote a letter, you are not going to be invited. I think for fairness, this issue involved him and the public protector and the NAC and all parties must be involved, be invited. I think the public protector must be invited on the issue, Yesara and Nyatela, on that view. And I'll propose that the, 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 the proposal, we can check out my document, Yaga Dennis, the items that he sent an email, that we must include with movie chess South Africa. And I hope you I think it's so important that we can add the hope because they are, there's a tournament, international tour, they don't have money. And we must get that, those an explanation on those two days. Thank you very much. Hello, hello, am I? Was I? I'm talking alone. Like technology. Okay. No. Chairperson, uh, okay, Chairperson Dennis Johnson, I would like to speak. Honourable members, can I chair? Honourable members, 
our hearing honorable proposal of honorable Long, the only thing that I can uh, reflect on is about tennis South Africa. It was the, these co honorable members, especially you, Honorable Mshongo, or any other member that were saying that we are not taking care of tennis South Africa. So when we were looking at um, the, those things, we we're prioritizing all those outstanding, but we do hear what we are saying. And then Honorable Dennis, Th thank you, Chairperson. Now, I, I made a proposal. I was hoping that the third and the seventh we would, would put together, uh, you know, in one meeting, and then and then get the additional slot in for the postponement. But the postponement has now been accommodated. The one of Member Slongo, so that has now been accommodated. I was just concerned we're going to lose that three weeks later. So I'm, I'm happy for that. I'm willing to Member Slongo. I'm willing to compromise. The fact that the program has been adjusted to 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 to, to see the urgency of of Member Slongo's uh, agenda um, uh, agenda point that must be dealt with and it is going to be dealt with now now uh, the coming week. But I want to comment rather on uh, Member Member Nyela, if I, if I pronounce it correctly. All I'm saying is that what Member Slongo is saying that everyone has the right, even even making allegations. But if the person make allegations against a committee or a chair. The person is also making it against parliament as an institution, because we represent parliament as an institution. So anyone can make this allegation. It must be tested, but the person who make that must also have facts because it can have consequences for that very same person. So, so that is the process. But what we should not tolerate, what we should not tolerate, chairperson, is the behavior of every individual who come and approach this committee. I have, I have, and I don't want to say what I've seen. The 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 individual person have have spoken out at the at the public hearing at the hearings of the public protector, and even I receive phone calls as well. So I can understand when the staff say they receive phone calls, they are either intimidated or or been been challenged that we are part of a bigger scheme scam or whatever we call it. So I would just want to say that we must deal uh, agree with um, with Ms. Longo. With, but the, but the public individuals in the same manner as we deal with anyone else and in the same manner we must not tolerate anyone who doesn't respect the protocol in how parliament works and i think that must be put clearly to the to mr mr Mandiala. so how are we going to deal if he's invited how are we going to deal uh with with this case because it's about the issues at hand and not about the personalities that is attacked at the moment now which we shouldn't tolerate thank you chairperson Thank you, Honourable uh, Dennis. Uh, Honourable members, we are so quiet. Chair, we are not quiet. We've raised our hands. Oh, I don't see them. Oh, I'm very sorry. Uh, Honourable Maloman. Thank you, Chair. Let me first appreciate the way your office have changed the, our program to prioritize the issue that we never concluded on Tuesday. I really appreciate that, Chair. It's very important that you conclude on that matter. But I want to support or to agree with the program so that if maybe there can be any changes during our program, let us maybe allow that space that there can be any changes that can be done according to our program and adopt it as it is. Thank you, Chair. Uh, honorable members, uh, Honorable Malomani proposing the adoption of the program as it is any second on, on, on that. Honorable Adams. Adams. Thank you, Chairperson. Yes, Chairperson, I concur um, with the proposal of Honorable uh, Malumane. If there can be any changes uh, on the program, we must um, allow that. So I move for the adoption of the program. Thank you. I've seen other hands, other hands. Honorable Zondi, Drusile, Sibia. Not and sure. my hand is still up. No, Chair, I... 
I was thinking that is a legacy, and the Honorable Strong will come back to you. Honorable Zon? Yes, Chair, thank you. I won't, I won't agree with any uh, program being taken out of um, the program in, in, in March, but if all these programs will be done in March, I agree with the with the with the, with the program as it is. Honourable SCB. And thanks, Chairperson. I do also support the the, the program as it as it is. Thanks, Chair. Honourable Mshombo. Chair, you've issued a statement, Nge Hogi. I saw the statement from you, and I'm yeah. saying that you should. Pardon. Yes, I'm Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying the agents here, Hoki, it's so important compared to chairs, South Africa. I'm not saying I'm talking about prioritizing of issues. Hoki, they don't have money now. They're hosting an inter international game, but they don't have money. What is happening? We must assist them, not suppose after the competition. Now I'm saying good, let's prioritize that and remove Hoki. I don't have a problem with the program, but good I'm a priority that you must think. Hoki, there's an issue, they don't have money. And your statement was saying, I, I, I recall the statement emphasizing good we support any team, the Hoki 12 or 5 million from the department. But now at the end of the day, chairs, I'm not saying it's not important. I'm talking about priority. Chairs, there are no issues of importance for now. Now let's prioritize the whole thing along the chairs, and then chairs will come the next term. For an example, tennis South Africa. Yes, there were issues at that time. Konamanje, I can say tennis and hockey. Hockey takes a priority. And I proposed this long time ago. Then for us to debate this, I think we must get someone with your team, also neutralizer, input before these things comes in. Because it's like me debating with the entire committee, because I don't have a voice on the so-called management team. Not me, myself. The DA does not have a voice on the management team. And the... But if there can be any changes, there there be changes, and then we allow the changes to happen. So I think the the point of Honorable Mshongo it's noted. And the secretary have noted the issue. Let them make sure that maybe even on Tuesday, the seventh, the briefing by the Sundus Museum, we can also put that item or honor as long is looking for. There is still space that way we can put so that we have two entities and discuss it. So I don't think there is a need. You could just never understand. Let's just agree on that. That there can be anything within our program. Thank you, Chair. Just uh, honorable members, uh, let me. Uh, uh, Johnny, I'm still sharing a meeting, Johnny. Please be patient, Gloria, but I'll come back to you. I'm still sharing the meeting. Uh, honorable members, uh, uh, the management committee, uh, I was thinking in that the, the proposal was adopted and seconded. Uh, if there's any other thing, the management committee will take care of the input of Honorable Mishongo and, and, and any other uh, person will feel after this day that there's something that they must communicate with the secretariat and the, the management. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, an issue on the table. Sure, I think the the honourable with the amendments. Anga to the committee. I've done the amendments and then I'll support it with the amendments. 
if they are provincial. Because for the majority amendments, that's why I need to, at least take it as is. But you must say with the amendments that I've done, and then we'll take it from there. Thank you very much. Okay, to be strong for the, the proposal of draft uh, was supported by uh, uh, Honorable uh, Maluman, Honorable Dennis, and Honorable Zonji, and Honorable uh, Sibia. They didn't talk about amendments. I'm saying to you now, because you come after four members adopted the, the program, I'm saying to you, uh, the, our, with the management, we look on what you are saying, and we are capable of looking uh, on whatever the members are raising. That's why we are saying it's a draft program. So when I was, I was trying to say, I was aware that we are going to uh, end the meeting at what that time, but I was looking off your good self opening the discussion after four members adopted the program. But nevertheless, uh, we are taking what you are saying. We we'll see what to do. Thank you, honorable member. Honorable members, uh, let's go to uh, the uh, the minutes, uh, the minutes of 29 and November and the second of December. Can you put them on the on the? Uh, honorable members, uh, these are minutes of the 29 November. Can you go up? Can can come come down, come down. Uh, don't be so fast. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, so, honorable me members, uh, we are presenting these minutes uh, to you. Do you want to say something, or do you, did you read, or do you want to correct uh, some something? Yes, honorable members. No adoption of these minutes. Honorable Adams. Thank you. I did, I go through the minutes and I couldn't find anything that is uh, mis, uh, mis, uh, uh, scribed. So I'll move for the adoption of the minutes. Thank you. Thank you, honorable member. Honorable Zondi. Seconded, sure. Thank you, Honorable Zondi. Thank you, Honorable Members. Let's go to the, the, the second set of minutes, which is 2nd of December. So, Chairperson, uh, Dennis, I was in that meeting. Um, may okay. I proceed, Chairperson? 
Yes, Honorable Dennis. Yeah. No, thank you. I was in that meeting. I was not in the previous one. I, uh, I'm requesting um, satisfied one of the members to um, to propose and second for acceptance of the minutes. Thank you. I'm sorry, Honorable Dennis. I had to to mute myself because this drive of Shabby was calling me. I didn't hear you. I'm very sorry about that. Now, Chairperson, just to repeat, I said I was in in a, in a meeting of the second. I was not in the previous one. I am requesting. I'm satisfied. I'm requesting uh, the members to um, um, to propose for the and, and second for the adoption of that minutes, as I not able to do it myself. Thank you. You know, Honorable Dennis, you even asked them to do that, but they were part of the meeting. They don't. Honorable Adams, your hand is up. <laughs> Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, I move for the adoption of the minutes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any second? Uh, <laughs> Honorable Malomani. I'm seconding, Chair. Did you see what the Honorable Dennis, he wanted to show us that uh, we are not appreciating the time, that if you have read the minutes, you must adopt. Maybe you were afraid that you always propose it. Thank you so much. Honorable members, um, as this committee, we are all leaders. And I'm pleading that every now and then uh, we need uh, to tolerate each other. And the, we are not angels, but uh, uh, if we can respect each other, we cannot have any problems. Even if we differ, we must differ like leaders. So I'm, I'm suspecting that I must always emphasize being a chairperson. I'm not an angel. Being your good self, we are, are human beings, but we are the caliber of leaders that we have been sent to serve in this committee, presenting communities there. So sometimes we need, uh, when we, 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 we talk and, and, and treat each other with respect, uh, it's very important, honorable members. And with this committee, uh, I do envy that this committee can meet three times a week. I'm not sure whether there are committees who are doing that. So we need to keep the good work and we need to tolerate each other. We need to, to tolerate each other. Uh, by those words, I'm closing this meeting officially. <coughs> Thank you, what? Chair. Thank you, Chair. 